This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian with you. Rich Paul. And Mark. And don't forget to join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Features that are waiting for you there, they're totally free. Those other talk show hosts in the business like to charge you for websites. Ours, we give it away. So go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. Got a dirty cop tonight uh, who has exposed himself not to females. But actually, two males. Fairly unusual pervy cop story. We'll okay. give you that when we get a chance. Also, the war on Uber and Lyft. Got some opinions from Reason.com. And a hacker has spoken out from inside his jail cell about why he did what he did. We'll get into that here uh, in a little bit. But we're going to actually start without your. Or we're going to start with your calls. Pete is in Long Beach. You're on Free Talk Live, Pete, with Ian Rich and Mark. Well, I want to talk about the dirty cop first off, and I want to say that, you know what, he's probably a faggot, you know? <laughs> Second thing is I want to say is uh, if you That's have an you offensive the village, term, uh, by the way. I don't that... care. Have you, have you ever heard of the village people, the police officer that was one of the village people? He has a song called Hot Cop, and he what he'll do basically <laughs> is he'll pull you over. <laughs> he'll pull you over to flirt with you, and then I'll get you in the rear end, you know? Well, I hadn't heard that Village People song. Um, At least we didn't have to uh, bleep that out. Yeah, thanks for self-censoring there, Pete. I, I will, I'll appreciate that much about your call here tonight, well, as offensive well, I, and Well, if awful I have the urge been. for that kind of a hookup, I'll go you know with what? Grindr. I don't want to deal with a cop. <laughs> people, laugh, people laugh at the Westboro Baptist. They laugh at those guys and say, oh, you're crazy. Oh, you're horrible. Oh, you're offensive. Well, I don't see anybody else standing up like that against the grain and i, I tried to and you want to see more people stand up and be crazy offend, <laughs> offensive and hateful yes he does well, but, i mean maybe they're onto <laughs> something I, I tried to email them to see what their stance was on other stuff because i'm a calvinist and they're a calvinist mm-hmm. i wanted to see if they're as strong against abortion and drugs and pornography and the other stuff is i think it's fair to say that so they who are else do you hate they are very much against all kinds of fun at the Westboro Baptist Church. I think that's. I don't think we, we're going out on a limb to uh, to make that suggestion. So, so if you, you want a church with more interesting God. people, you might want to try the Shire Free Church. I don't think Pete would oh, make boy. it uh, in the Shire Free Church. You have to be a peace-oriented person to be involved in the Shire Free Church. And Pete uh, advocates for hanging people. Uh, hanging well, people. You know, yeah, you Pete know would what? like to it's hang. Uh, you'd like to hang gay people, wouldn't you, Pete? Not just that, Obama. He advocates for drone bombing people and killing innocent villagers and farmers and sending Blackwater guys to do evil stuff and to take your rights. You know, I think I thought that justice was the guardian of liberty. You don't do it for nothing. You do it because that's what needs to happen. If you don't do that to tyrants, what are they going to do to you? They're going to mouse the tongue you. Come on. You know, um, to to a tyrant, everyone looks like a tyrant, and that just makes the opportunity to uh, to, to bomb everyone, right? Like, so to you know, a tyrant, everyone looks like a tyrant, meaning like a competing well, tyrant. To a thief, everybody, you, the thief's always looking out for people to steal from him. I okay. don't expect people to steal from me because I don't steal from people. Tyrants have the expectation that other people are going to be tyrants over them because they, they are, are tyrants. tyrants. That and, makes sense. You know, I mean, the, the, so many people, the majority mm. of the planet would do what Obama. Has done with the drone program to some group of people because there's always an enemy out there, right, Pete? Yeah. I mean, if you had the ability to drone bomb some people, who would you drone bomb? Um, I wouldn't drone bomb anyone unless they were attacking me or somebody that I had responsibility to protect. Really, there's not a gay bar you drone bomb? I mean, you want to hang them? <laughs> I wouldn't drone bomb them. What I would do is I would put them in a court of law and I would, you know, I would give them a fair trial and they would be convicted for of what? what? Of what? <laughs> <laughs> For what side of me? That used to be a crime. I think it's uh, not a crime now. He's bringing it back. It could be. Okay, well, uh, I, I only asked you if you have the ability to drone bomb someone, not mag- mag- ma- you know, make magic laws out of your While we're butt. at it, what other <laughs> laws would you like to bring back, Pete? How about laws against witchcraft? Uh, laws against adultery? <laughs> You're darn right, absolutely. What about you witchcraft? Know, hmm. That's that you should be. You should be given. You shouldn't just be indiscriminately blown up or whatever or killed. You should be given a trial, and you should be found guilty in a court of law by a jury of your peers for breaking God's law. And then, oh, How about, about sex outside justice. of marriage? So is God incapable of enforcing his own laws? Does he need all this, he all, all this help? Does. Is God helpless? 
No, but you know what? Usually God works through secondary means. So, you know, if you're a, you're a nation like ours that was founded on Christian principles, he expects us to go and he expects us to do justice. I'm not uh, a I nation, this... nor am I a urination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got jokes. Well, you know what? Guys like you well, I can't do so anything but like joke with you. That was the you're easy You're an insane killer. Yeah. I'm so, sorry. So do you think that, sure. you know, if Jesus did come back and encountered a uh, homosexual, oh, do you back, think he'd right. kill him? Do you think he'd kill a homosexual for just for being gay? No, but I believe that but you what's going to happen is, no, I'm, what I'm saying is this. Let me, let me finish. The homosexual community, if they die in that state, they're going to hell. But see, if they're alive when stuff hits the van, the Lord's going to roast them to a crisp. Haven't you ever read the Bible? Why don't you read what it says in Revelation? And well, haven't you read of the well, I have the seen a copy of the Bible, but it wasn't notarized as the thing, so oh, I'm not no, entirely got, sure it was written by God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know that blasphemous remark you made? That would be against the law. You should be you should be found guilty in a court of law by your peers. And, and then the what? Should like... Could well, we be stoned? Should... I'd like to be stoned. It sounds well, to me like what he said was well, actually factual. Like God did not have the Bible notarized. You want him not... punished for it, but it was only a factual statement. And this is the problem with religious beliefs. You get so emotionally attached to what it is that you believe, you can't even look at the world from a factual standpoint. It is a fact. I look at everything mm -hmm. through the lens it's of not, the King James. It's a because... fact that he no. said it. Now, I'm, I'm curious. There, there was this guy, Abraham, in the Bible, and Abraham heard voices in his head telling him to kill his son. And so he that? grabbed himself a knife and he went out to do that. Is, that. is that what you would recommend? If people hear voices in their head telling them to, to kill people, <laughs> do, would you that? obey you... those voices or would you say seek help? Where does it? Uh, where do you base your thing off? Where does it say that he heard voices that told him to do that? I think you should look at it in context to what it says. It doesn't say anything about voices. Uh, wasn't Abraham told <laughs> by God to sacrifice his son? Isn't I'm that pretty the sure story that's the story? Of Abraham? That's not. That's that's not voices in your head. Oh, it's just a effort. voice in your head. Oh, oh, because it's, it's not imaginary, right? How can you what tell the that? difference totally between an imaginary and an unimaginary? I mean, when you hear voices telling you to kill people, how do you authenticate How those do you know voices? it's God? Yes, exactly. How do you know it's because, not, you know, just you being a nutball? <laughs> because he had a firsthand experience with God. Moses did. Most what does that mean, a firsthand in... experience with God? Wouldn't that mean hearing God's voice in your head? I mean, what is it? what are you talking about? If you saw the apparition, you would it make a difference? With God. He walked with God. He, he, you know, God talked to him. God revealed Himself to him. He didn't physically see him, I don't think. But he, you know, what does it mean to walk with God? How do you know if, the difference? I mean, you do understand that sometimes crazy people see visions and yeah, they oh, hear yeah. voices telling them to kill people. Well, what if well, if, what if, if you, you heard that... a voice telling you to kill somebody, how would you authenticate the source of that voice? That's all I want to well, know. How do you really know that it's God and not your crazy? neighbor with a you know funky microphone and, a, <laughs> and you know a loudspeaker let me ask you something how do you will you on the, the it's not fair pete for you to uh, to answer his question with another question let me ask you something how do you know how do you know it's not though that's the thing and the other thing the well, other i generally I err on the side of not killing anybody i mean if somebody <laughs> said hey go kill that guy and i'm not sure who it is or why he's saying it i'm probably just gonna <laughs> ignore that voice but the question is this, though. What about all the people that mock and say, oh, well, if God's a loving God, why did he command all those guys to hack men, women, and children and everything to pieces? A damn good ride? question. Thanks for the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I would like to know the answer to that question. If God is a loving God, why does he order people to die? Why does he punish his well, own creation? In the Bible, it says that you need to have uh, two witnesses to authenticate something. This is why uh, Paul's called an apostle, because he had two servants on the road to Damascus. But Abraham didn't have two people for the slaying of Isaac, mm -hmm. or the uh, attempted slaying of Isaac. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can take control. Coming up, Perverted Cop. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. 
Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. The zebra of the plains is perpetually hunted by a myriad of merciless predators. With no purpose other than to feed monsters, the zebra spends its entire life standing around awaiting a violent death. They are nature's ultimate prey. The zebra paces the earth, patiently going through the motions of life, knowing that at any moment it will end in a sudden shock of pain and brutality. With its black and white stripes serving as an ostentatious beacon to any nearby predators, the zebra whiles away its time before gruesome elimination. Zebra, wait on the pantry shelf that is the African plain before something finds it and, at last, remembers to eat it. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, get five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Talk Live. You dial toll-free and take control of the airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. What you may be asking is ProXPN. Well, it's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data, meaning your ISP or anybody else who might be snooping on you 
We'll no longer know where you're going and what you're doing online. In fact, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So you go and grab their app. It's free over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, you can get set up as well. It's just a bit of a different process with ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade from their free account to the premium account to get you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access. You can privately torrent and get uh, past regionally blocked websites with ProXPN. You upgrade using our discount code, and you'll get a sweet discount. 50% off the price of the annual account by using code FTL50. And that stands for Free Talk Live. That's FTL and then the number 50. Uh, you can also save more than that if you'd like by using code FTLBTC, then paying with Bitcoin for that annual account. You'll get 62% off with that code. So you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Those codes, again, are FTL50 or FTLBTC. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We got some nasty cop stories here, and then we can talk about a hacker and him speaking out from inside a prison cell. He says hacking government websites is all he ever wanted to do. We'll explain more about why and what his story is here in a little bit. But first, the perverted cop going in a bit of a different direction. Uh, November 18th, according to thesmokinggun.com, normally police pervert stories are about them victimizing women. In this case, this officer was victimizing men, young men to be specific. New Jersey policeman was arrested yesterday, according to the smoking gun, and charged with unzipping his pants and exposing himself to a series of young male drivers whom the cop pulled over during a seven-month period this year. Jason Miller, aged 37, is facing official misconduct and lewdness charges in connection with his duties as an officer with the Newton Police Department, where he's worked since 2001. Uh, picture uh, He is pictured in this story. We'll link that to you over on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. He's a married father of two and is free on $35,000 bail. A probable cause affidavit alleges that Miller exposed himself during, quote, numerous late-night traffic stops to, quote, satisfy his prurient interests. Then he allowed the male motorists to leave without traffic summonses, though in some instances he was aware that the driver had been drinking or that a vehicle's registration and insurance had expired. While the affidavit details Miller's interaction with five men aged 18 to 26, investigators noted that they have evidence of other late night or early morning stops involving Officer Miller and young adult males, wherein it appears that his pants were opened and or his genitals were exposed and or a zipper can be heard opening or closing. So it sounds like they have some audio evidence here. Sounds like this guy is going to lose his job. An 18-year-old college student identified by his initials J.A. told police he was stopped by a Newton officer in September and that when the cop approached his car, he noticed the officer's zipper was down and saw what he believed to be the officer's exposed genitals. Now, I mean, this has to be an, a really unusual experience to... I mean, have the officer come up to the car window and just having his junk hanging out of his pants. I mean, that would be an, an interesting situation to get into. Uh, you know, what would your response be to that? Yeah, I don't know. Looking down the barrel of a one-eyed trouser trout, I don't know what I'd make of that. I, <laughs> I would probably exclaim in surprise, hey, what are you doing with that? My goodness. <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. Well, one thing's for sure. I know that, Mark, you and I both have the uh, Freedom Cam, so we would have uh, recorded that particular interaction. At the very least, your reaction to it, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's got a fisheye lens. Freedom Cam will show that driver's side window <laughs> pretty, okay. pretty clear. Fisheye lens. We're back to the trouser <laughs> trout. <laughs> Indeed. As, as long as uh, his crotch area is as high up as the car window, it would be in sight to uh, anybody with a dash-mounted camera. According to the story... I guess he really didn't try to pull over pickup trucks that were jacked up then, right? Though He'd the driver's lower. registration and insurance had lapsed, the officer, identified by investigators as Miller, let the teen drive away instead of impounding the car. When later recalling the incident for his girlfriend, the teenager said that the cop's, quote, junk was hanging out, unquote. <laughs> KK, a 23-year-old driver, told police he was recently stopped by a Newton officer while driving a male friend home after a late night out. The officer said, or the officer, excuse me, uh, was said to have asked him if he noticed the officer's zipper was down. The driver said no. After the traffic stop was completed, the man dropped his friend off and continued driving. 
It was then that the driver realized he was being followed by the same officer who had pulled him over. The cop eventually pulled up alongside KK and motioned for him to roll down his window. The officer again asked him if he noticed that the officer had his fly down, and KK again told him no. The officer asked him if the person he was dropping off was his boyfriend. KK told him no, and then told him he has a girlfriend. The cop, whom investigators have identified as Miller, told him to have a good night and left the area. As part of the probe of Miller, police have reviewed numerous videos of traffic stops conducted by him. The videos investigators allege support their claim that he exposed himself to male drivers. For example, a video of a 2.39 in the morning stop in August clearly appears to show Miller's pants are open and his genitals are exposed while he interacts with a 26-year-old driver. Following a March stop of a man who acknowledged he was coming from a bar and had consumed alcohol... Miller returned to his patrol car without having issued summonses or investigated the motors for drunk driving. On a tape from the Miller's cruiser, quote, you can hear what happens to be the sound or what appears to be the sound of a zipper opening and or closing, according to the affidavit. He's been indefinitely suspended without pay pending the outcome of this criminal case. You know, all things considered, this isn't the worst perverted cop that you could possibly imagine. Like, he didn't ask anybody to touch it. I mean, if... If this was all that happened, like if if the cop walks up to the car window and wants you to simply acknowledge that his junk is hanging out and then <laughs> let you off from whatever speeding ticket or a drunk driving citation or whatever it is that you might have otherwise gotten, that seems like a fair trade to me. Well, it seems fair to you. I think other people would find it. <laughs> would, would, you're going to have a variety of reactions to this, right? Oh, like, yeah. You know, from people who are, you know, delighted to <laughs> really, really upset horrified <laughs> yeah i mean i've seen some johnson's showering at the ymca and you know really if i if if it came down to taking a shower at the ymca or getting a ticket i'd probably take the shower yeah so yeah, no you know it seems like it's not quite as bad as what cops ordinarily do which is write you a damn ticket or you but, know a really perverted cop who is on a power trip could force you to do something to his johnson in this case all he did was let it hang out and wanted people to acknowledge that it was there I mean, maybe that's the first step of what may be, you know, if he did, if he continued to get away with this, maybe he would take it further and further. But it then again, it seems like he would. Um, then again, he's been on the force since 2001, so it's not like he's a noob. This probably wasn't his first time doing it. It it, it also seems like, uh, you know, I mean, you're you're very powerless in this circumstance. If a police officer walks walks up with you in this lewd manner. Mm -hmm. You're going to react completely <laughs> differently than if a stranger or your friend walks up to you and this. Like, there's a. It, you're yes, you would. You're stuck. If I've got a dash cam, I'm going to laugh my ass off and call my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Toll free number here freedomcam.net. Yep, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. If you've had a bizarre encounter with the police, you want to share your story, you're certainly welcome to do so. Or maybe you are a cop and you've heard stories about your co-workers. We'd love to hear about that, too. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. 
From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what's on your mind. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, why would someone want silver and gold, and where's the best place to get it? Well, you could get silver or gold for a variety of reasons. A hedge against inflation. Maybe you think, uh, you know, as an investment, maybe you think the price is going to go up in the relatively near future, or uh, as a barter currency in case things go really bad. Um, people want it for a variety of reasons, and that is, uh, you know, a reason to get gold and silver. So you can go to gold.freetalklive.com. I'm looking at the price of silver. I think that it's going to be headed upward in the relatively near future. That's my opinion. You can have yours. Gold.freetalklive.com, and we've got a telephone number there too. If you want to, uh, you want that, I'll just read it off to you here. 877-857-9938. It's gold.freetalklive.com. 877-857-9938. All right, let's continue with your calls and thoughts. we got a perverted cop exposing himself to male drivers. That's the story we've been talking about, but there's more bad cop news on the way. Plus, we can talk about story, Mark, that you wanted to discuss last night. We didn't get to it. A Louisiana literacy test that apparently was given to people a long time ago, people who, uh, black people, right, who wanted yep. to vote? 1964, yeah. You had to pass a test to be able to vote in Louisiana? That's well, right. Well, I uh, think you had to pass a test regardless of race. The assumption was that blacks would be less likely to be able to pass it. I No one passed this. No one <clears throat> passed no, it in Louisiana? None of the Harvard students that took it passed this. So You mean it's been re-given out today? One of two things could have occurred in these circumstances. They could have chosen to give the test only to blacks, or they could have, um, because the pe test was considered to be somewhat vague. Yeah, I didn't want to get it detailed into this. We, we can talk more about that test here in a little bit. Let's go to Aaron. He's in St. George, Utah. You're on Free Talk Live. Aaron. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the call. So I'm calling because... I'm listening to this story on the way home in my car radio like I do every day from you guys uh, coming home from work. And I just cannot believe 
that this sort of thing happens. Not to say that I'm not saying that you're lying or anybody's lying. I mean, it's there, but I just need to know why out there, why does that somebody that chooses to expose themselves, what are they getting out of this? It's, what kind, it's a perversion. I mean, it a I mean it's, it's you, look, you're, com I mean, you're combining a, somebody who's perverted with power. And bored. And, and, well, I don't know how bored he is, but... Uh, it's you know, the middle of the night. He's stopping okay. people for traffic violations. That's not to say he wouldn't do the same thing in the middle of the day either. But uh, nonetheless, he's somebody who's got a, a particular interest in sexual prurience. And he has the power to use the violence of the state to compel people to do things. Uh, whether or not those things are legal, they, he's got a gun on his hip or other kinds of weapons on his hip. And, uh, the, you know, the people who he's pulled over certainly know he's more than likely to be willing to use those things against them. And so he can do things that are completely impossible for other people to get away with. Now, obviously, he didn't get away with it forever in this particular case, uh, but uh, but he has the ability to utilize his perversion to put it into play in a, in a much more untouchable manner than the average pervert. So that's what's going but, on. But, say, but let's just say he didn't have a gun and he didn't have this position. I've heard people doing this. I've heard of this type of perversion, this exposure, this, uh, you know, I, I just... I still don't get quite – I don't understand this perversion. I was looking to see whether one of you three gentlemen possibly have some insight as to w what causes somebody to do this. It's an exhibitionist. Even without the gun and all this stuff. Yeah, and what, what, what happens? Is it, is, did they get a rush – from, That's a um, good question. Yeah, um, what, what makes what is any what is a perversion? What makes somebody act upon that perversion? Uh, there are a variety of perversions out there that uh, this man could have gotten. He happened to get uh, you know, or not, or none at all, right? Um, but he happened to have this one, and that's how it played out. Uh, yeah, I it's guess a I wild world, man. Out. You might want to start Both with a definition of the word perversity, and perversity means. Doing something precisely because you know you should not. So that's oh, wow. that's uh, the basic definition of the word. And that can be part of the rush. But what would be interesting would be to hear from somebody who has the interest in self-exposure. Uh, you know, whether it be a flasher or a streaker or something like that. Somebody who uh, who who gets this right. Because the three of us sitting here, unless one of us is actually into uh, being an exhibitionist, and I don't think any of us are going to admit to that. I'm not uh, personally, but uh, it, it, but if somebody was interested in that, perhaps they would be able to better understand where this guy was coming from to more accurately answer your question, Aaron, without involving in speculation. I mean, to, but to speculate about this, it's probably exciting, as you're saying, Rich, to do something you're not supposed to. That's generally a, you know, an exciting thing. One of the reasons why the, uh, the war on drugs, we talk about the forbidden fruit aspect of doing drugs. Because they're illegal, they're more interesting to some people. Um, and so similarly, because it's inappropriate, because you know, people will be offended by this, and because he can, uh, he can he can do this stuff and mostly get away with it until I guess just uh, just recently. So what motivates? Please call in. Have them call in. Please have them <laughs> I call in. I would love that. If somebody's listening out there, please. Just no one's going to know who you are. We just all would like to know so we can better understand you. I just need to know this. I don't get it. I just don't understand. Please. So just to clarify, hey. your question is: Why does somebody have the drive to expose themselves to others publicly? Correct. What 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 happens? Like what what is the motivation behind that? I just need to know what's going in, on in their mind. What are they thinking? What is the reward? What what happens after you do it? How do you feel? It would just be so interesting. I just I just I'm so removed from that notion. I don't understand. Thank you, Aaron, for your call Thank tonight. You. I imagine that uh, one of the rewards is the shock is to have an effect. On that other person, whether it be the cop having a you know shocking effect on the drivers he's pulled over, or the kind of the classic flasher with the the long trench coat flashing uh, young girls or whatever it is that you know. Have you classic. seen? Uh, as an aside, have you seen the, uh, the the video, the online sort of viral video of? Uh, and it's probably one of those animated gifs or gifs. I'm not exactly sure which, where the guy has the classic flasher coat and uh, he runs up to a kid on the playground, um, in, and the mom's behind and the kids in front. He, <laughs> <laughs> does the flash the mom you know like grabs him and turns him around and he's wearing a short and a t-shirt and the t-shirt says stay in school 
<laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I've seen also that. seen a picture of a guy flashing the Venus de Milo, and it said, expose yourself to art. <laughs> so share your thoughts. What is the motivation here? Why is somebody, why are people, a small, small section of them, or at the very least, a small section of them does this stuff? Like, maybe more people are interested in it, but they don't have the gumption to actually go and do it. Uh, what is the interest? Obviously, someone streaking across a football field is motivated, I think, differently than the the kind of the classic perv with the long trench coat. Uh, so I think there's different levels of this, but at the, you know, to some extent, it is all uh, maybe related. Yeah, and uh, you know, sometimes it's for attention, right? Like I've seen oh, women yeah. sort of flash their boobs. They're not doing it as an ex, you know, in the same sort of exhibitionist way as uh it's not doesn't seem as lecherous like when that i know you want to see this so i'm going to show it to you as opposed Mm, to i demand that you look at this like there's a there's a different kind of motivation there um so Mm -hmm. i don't know but if you happen to be a pretty female exhibitionist, feel free to send me a sample of your work. Uh, <laughs> it's your, rich.paul.freeman your... <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, wait, at Gmail also, right? Uh, and at Gmail. Okay. Are we really got to give out his Gmail address. Come on. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Corey's in Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Corey. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, Corey. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, I was thinking uh, the last caller was asking, uh, you know, what, what would really prompt somebody to do something like that? Um, I think the best answer, I mean, I think I could probably give is obviously, you know, you, you look back, there, there very well could have been probably maybe some sort of childhood trauma, you know, in that person's life, maybe um, sexual trauma that really they haven't fully dealt with. Um, and so that's kind of like sort of their way of just kind of expressing it or just kind of, you know, Hey, like something in their head, maybe subconsciously says, like, you know, this is kind of a normal thing or, you know what I mean? Like something along those lines. The childhood trauma certainly seems to be a relatively common factor in sexual deviancy, but not always, right? I mean, there's stories about people, well, I'll share one here in a moment. Hang on, Corey, if you want to continue the analysis here, we can do that. Uh, The toll-free number is 855 450 free. Are you interested in exposing yourself? What's it all about? Explain it. We talk live. Mirror, mirror on the wall. How did I become so fat? If you're a woman over 40 and you're having trouble losing extra weight, please call the Amberin Hotline now at 1 800 959 4261. After 40, your body changes, and so should your weight loss strategy. At Amberin, we specialize in breakthrough solutions specifically tailored to women over 40, including hormonal balance, relief from menopausal symptoms like hot flashes. And you can lose pounds of stubborn extra weight in just weeks with Amberin Weight Loss. Right now, through this special radio offer, you can get a 100% risk-free trial. Just call 1-800-959-4261 now. So if you're a woman over 40 and you're tired of looking in the mirror and not liking what you see, call the Amberin Hotline today. Hurry. This limited time 100% risk-free offer won't last forever. Call 1-800-959-4261. That's 1-800-959-4261. Again, 1-800-959-4261. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? 
Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, a uh, story we had about a cop who is in trouble for exposing himself to multiple young male, younger male drivers uh, that he pulled over in New Jersey. Jason Miller is his name. He's on a bail of $35,000 facing lewdness charges and official misconduct. Uh, he's in trouble, but it led to a larger discussion about what is this? Where does this come from? Where does the desire to expose one's genitals come from? And, you know, you never really hear it very often uh, about a woman exposing them in sort of a an undesired manner, right? Mark, you made the distinction between sort of showing one's, and of course breasts aren't genitals, but showing off one's sensitive areas. You can still call it flashing, though. So, right, flashing people for the purpose of entertaining those people because they desire to see it, and then also the sort of standard flasher with a trench coat flashing people who did not ask uh, to, to see that. And you don't normally hear about women flashing people who didn't ask to see I it. think there's a sexual disparity here, and it's not in the perversion. Hmm. It's in the perception of the perversion, right? Hmm. Well, I wonder. I mean, you know, if... You wonder that, huh? If uh, if a woman goes about and does this, maybe it's that most people are perceiving it as being as perverted as a man doing it. Right. And so you don't hear about it as often. But, but I guess my question is, does it happen as often? Is you know, is a woman as likely as a man to throw on a trench coat or whatever the female equivalent of the trench coat would be and then to go out and expose herself undesiredly to other people? I can think of three times that I've been flashed by women and it didn't bother me a bit. Uh, twice over the visit system in jail. and <laughs> Did they cut off the feed right after that? Um, the first time they did, the second mm -hmm. time they didn't notice it, but nice. the first time Monica couldn't come visit me for another 30 days after <laughs> that. <laughs> so yeah, that could be a factor as well, that maybe the victims of a female flashing would be less likely to report such a thing. I suspect. I, I don't know. I mean, your thoughts are welcome here. We've got Corey on the line in Florida. Corey, you suggested some sort of form of childhood trauma as to why it is that some people would engage in unwanted flashing. And were you talking about child sexual trauma or just trauma in general? Well, so, well sexual trauma, definitely. <clears throat> um, you know, more often than not, obviously, a lot of people... Uh, not that this cop, you know, I mean, this cop isn't being charged with rape or anything like that, but certainly, obviously, his behaviors of exposing himself could definitely lead on that he might have those those type of tendencies. And and more often than not, you know, I've worked with trauma victims uh, for six years uh, who have experienced like sexual trauma. A lot of them tend to exhibit the same behaviors uh, that their aggressors uh, gave to them. But it might either be that or, you know, this cop might be suffering from what I would probably call the Caligula effect. You know, he, 
just like Caligula, who was the emperor, he was very misogynistic. I have this power. I can do whatever I want. You know, for him, I wear this badge, and, oh, I can get away with whatever. And if that means exposing myself, you know what I mean? Probably mm-hmm. thought, yeah, sure. you know, I can let these people off. I have the power. So it could be that, too. Corey, thanks for calling, and thanks for sharing your thoughts here tonight. You're welcome to join in to the discussion at 855-450 free, especially if you are an exhibitionist, if you are a flasher, or you've you know been involved in knowing someone like that. So I'm wondering about this childhood Im- imprinting thing. Now, I'm not talking about this being a perversion necessarily. Um, I mean, but I, kids imprint, right? Um, we, we seem to have this sort of – it happens. A friend of mine uh, was – raised by a an adopted sister who was Vietnamese. And he, uh, you know, his the sister was significantly older, more than like 12 years older or something like that, and took care of him as it was a baby. Basically, she was, uh, you know, t- to some extent, she was the, the babysitter. He only dates um, Asian women now. Hmm. And I'm just assuming that somewhere along the line, when his sexuality was forming, that she happened to be in the room or something, and... Bam, that's it. Like, this is what he prefers now. And I don't know. I mean, there people have preferences for whatever reasons they have preferences. So Yeah, I, I don't think it's always trauma. I think that in a lot of cases it's not. I know one of our listeners told me uh, once in a conversation that uh, that they are interested in being tied up. Like, that's mm. their thing, you know. Um, where does that come from? Well, he claims he wasn't tied up as a kid or, like, nobody abused him is, you know, that's the claim. Um, the claim was that he was interested in magic tricks and was very young. I don't know, maybe you know, nine or something like that. And had tied himself up in order to try to, as Houdini, uh, Houdini might have done, to, you know, loose himself from the bonds and... He says that during that process, he was rubbing himself on uh, sort of you know, on his stomach on the floor, trying to get loose, and he got himself a stiffy off of doing that. And then a little bit later on, you know, that was That's his that. thing. Yeah. That was his thing from that point on. Uh, so you know, not necessarily trauma. It could just be something you have something it's a that weird happened. World. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of traumas. It seems like most of these kinks that people develop have something to do with like sex and guilt and you know it's like a lot of a lot of the women that i've been with who liked to be tied up it it seems to me that really they're trying to avoid responsibility for their own feelings it's like Mm -hmm. if i feel like i don't have a choice i don't have to feel guilty about liking this yeah you're Um, right there's been interesting that's not the first time i've heard that particular theory either uh the the you know going back to the idea that america was kind of this puritan place a long time ago and hasn't you don't think they've got kink in europe i don't think they're take a look at japan (laughs) <laughs> I I don't think they're nearly as bad now. Japan has very rigid uh, sexual rules. Um, France not so much. I would say you would find, and and this is a total generalization, but it, I would guess that you would find more kink in Japan than you would find in in say Germany. Could be. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I mean, I'm not saying that European countries have no kink. That's not what I'm saying at all. But it is interesting, to, as Rich was suggesting, that you know you've got this uh, societal anti-sex attitude, which can result, sort of manifest itself in very strange ways. If if young people or women specifically have been taught that sex is bad. They want sex because we're humans, and that's what most humans want, with the exception of asexuals. You know, these women want sex, and like you're saying, Rich, they may want to lose control of the situation by being tied up, etc., so that they can then have what they want while at the same time not having full responsibility, or at least feeling as though they don't have full responsibility for taking part in that. Which, of course, they do because, you know, there's the safe word and, you know, you're obviously consenting to being tied up and so, et cetera, et cetera. You know, just own it. But people are, I think there is a lot of repression and that does manifest itself in interesting and very sort of deviant ways. Uh, the toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. If, for instance, it wasn't so uh, forbidden to see genitalia in public perhaps these flashers wouldn't get the same rush off of performing that act. If it was not uncommon to see a naked person every now and then, you know, just walking down the street or whatever, 
then would the same would the same power come from uh, or perception of power for the the flasher come from that act? There was a uh, I remember it's probably been twenty years now. Um, there was a guy going to Berkeley who was called the Naked Guy, and like and he would just be naked on campus, just be naked. Okay, uh, he was going to class and he was naked, and that was his thing, and. Yeah, you know, I mean, he he was he hit the morning shows on the the news for mm -hmm. a little while. They they'd update you sometimes on him. Hey, look, the naked guy's doing his thing uh, some more, or whatever. The naked guy is now studying in the library. <laughs> yeah, <but> it's <laughs> it's kind of interesting, right? Like this guy, he's, I haven't heard anything bad about him since he was just the naked guy. And I'd be interested, you know, what's the naked guy doing today? Uh, you know, it, it was it, because it was Berkeley, and because you could get away with some weird stuff there. Apparently he's dead, according to Wikipedia. Oh my God! Well, I'm gonna have to go take a look at that. He uh, died in 2006. His name was Luis Andrew Martinez, born yeah, he... in 1972. Yep, that's all sounds about right um, as far as uh, time frames. What did he die of? Martinez attended classes at uh, UC Berkeley in September of 92. His second year, he began appearing naked in public and led a campus nude in to protest social repression. Campus police first arrested him that fall for indecent exposure when he jogged naked near Southside dormitories late on a Saturday night. The county prosecutor refused to prosecute, concluding that nudity without lewd behavior was not illegal. Martinez began strolling around campus naked, citing philosophical reasons. He explained that when he dressed in excuse me, when he dressed in expensive, uncomfortable, stylish, appropriate attire, he hid the fact that his personal belief was that clothes were useless in his environment, except as a tool for class and gender differentiation. The university just, just keep your dirty little butt off the seat. Yeah, that's true. I don't really like that. You know, like hey. Whatever's going on there, I'd, don't I'd like some between you and me. Yeah, no, no streaks, please. Eight fifty-five. You just carry a rag around. I don't. I guess you don't put it in your pocket. <laughs> Utility belt. What about your backpack? <laughs> uh, so toll-free number here. Eight fifty-five. There's more expensive lessons. Expensive backpacks. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We'll find out how he died here in a little bit and take your calls about exposing yourself. It's free talk live. Eight fifty-five four fifty free. You take control of the airwaves. More coming up. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Canaan, the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.24 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,197 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $374. Antiwar.com reports the massacre of hundreds of members of the Albu Nimer tribe by the Islamic State was seen as potentially driving other Sunni tribes off the fence and into the arms of the Shiite government as an alternative to the Islamic State. It's not working out that way. Albu Nimer, a major Sunni tribe in the easternmost portion of the Anbar province, was also one of the few that was still on good terms with the Iraqi government, though their fighting forces have been effectively wiped out in the the Islamic State purges around the city of Hit. They were trying to bring other Sunni tribes on board for expelling the Islamic State from Anbar, but there's no sign of any of these other tribes moving closer to the Iraqi government since the massacres, and they may well have had their intended effect of convincing the other tribes not to get involved. The Islamic State has mostly relied on local Sunni tribes to run its expansive territory across Iraq and Syria, though on those occasions that they have clashed with these tribes, they've been extremely heavy-handed, trying to make an example out of the groups that resist their rule openly. It's a dangerous game for the Islamic State to play as well because they probably can't fight too many tribes at once and their economy is heavily dependent on keeping them at least partially on board with their continued rule. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Forbes reports, while all eyes have been on the Silk Road 2.0 and its alleged operator Blake Benthal this month, the U.S. Marshal Service announced Monday that it will auction off 50,000 bitcoins belonging to Ross Ulbrich, the alleged mastermind of the original Silk Road. In June, the Marshals auctioned off approximately 30,000 bitcoins seized from the Silk Road servers in October 2013. All potential bidders for these 50,000 bitcoin must register by noon on December 1st and the winning bidders will be notified the day after the auction, December 4th. The money earned in the auction will sit in escrow until Ulbricht's court case is concluded. Ulbricht's trial is currently scheduled to begin January 5th, 2015, after being delayed from its original start date in early November. While he has pled not guilty to seven drug trafficking, money laundering, computer hacking, and ID theft charges, Ulbricht says he is the owner of the Bitcoin on his computer, according to a claim in the civil forfeiture action. If Ulbrich wins his court case, he will receive the money obtained in the auction. If he loses, the money will go to the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Business Insider reports Harvard University and the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, are both being sued for allegedly discriminating against Asian American students in their undergraduate admissions policies. The lawsuit claims Harvard and UNC's race-based affirmative action policies hurt the admissions chances of Caucasians and Asian American students. The lawsuit against Harvard claims it intentionally tries to limit the number of Asians in attendance the same way it once limited the number of Jews at the school. The lawsuits were filed by Students for Fair Admissions, a newly formed nonprofit group. The group is made up of students, parents, and others who believe that racial classification and preferences in college admissions are unfair, unnecessary, and unconstitutional. The group said in a press release, Students for Fair Admissions complaint highlights data and analysis that strongly suggest that white, African American, and Hispanic applicants are given racial preference over better qualified Asian Americans applying for admission to Harvard. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Frustrated Superman fans told reporters Monday that the economically healthy and financially stable Daily Planet newspaper is now the most unrealistic aspect of the comic book's universe. Acknowledging that enjoying the adventures of a superhero that can fly, lift cars over his head, and shoot beams of light out of his eyes requires some suspension of disbelief, longtime readers said even the comic's most exciting stories are regularly ruined by the implausibility of a thriving daily newspaper whose advertising revenue and circulation numbers have not at all been threatened by a media landscape overtaken by laptops, smartphones, and aggregation websites. Look, I can play along with Superman using his breath to freeze a volcano or clapping his hands together to cause some sort of sonic boom, but seeing images of a thriving Daily Planet newsroom not facing layoffs or dwindling home subscriptions just really takes me out of the story. No one in Metropolis has realized they could get news online faster and for free? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts on whatever happens to be on your mind. Coming up here tonight, the Louisiana literacy test given to people a long time ago to before they were allowed to vote. It's been re-given out to college students, and Mark's got the shocking results uh, coming up here in a moment. We'll get to that, but we've ended up talking about exposing oneself and was uh, inspired to do this by a cop who was apparently exposing himself to younger male drivers, ages 18 to 20-some, uh, on pullovers. So he would walk up to the car window with his uh, penis hanging out, and uh, would usually ask for some sort of acknowledgement from the driver that they did indeed know that his junk was uh, <laughs> was hanging out. He wouldn't ask them to, you know, do anything fellatio related with it or anything. There was never any sexual allegations as far as like sexual contact uh, is concerned. So this was just a pure uh, exhibitionism, self-exposure kind of thing. So we uh, ended up having a larger conversation about, well, what is the motivation? Somebody called to ask, why do people do this? What's their motivation? And there's a lot of speculation, but so far we actually haven't heard from somebody who has this particular uh, interest, because I think that would be the most revealing, right? Like if, Revealing? To, yeah. <laughs> 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 so if you want to comment on uh, this, you're welcome to 855-450-FREE. Greg is with us in Lake Isabella, California, listening to KVLI. Hello, Greg. Hey, how you gentlemen doing this evening? Good. You're on with Ian, Rich, and Mark. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, when I dialed in, you guys were focused pretty heavily on the period sexual nature of his uh, motivation. But I think that uh, in the meantime, you guys kind of started getting along to what I think is probably um, – a better idea is that uh, there's a lot of repression. You know, there's a lot of rules in society. Why do we all act out? It's like, oh, we're going to start off, oh, I'm going to go out and break the rules today. You know, and then think about a cop. He's got a lot of rules on him. You know, maybe he can't handle it. Maybe he shouldn't have been an officer. And uh, rather than killing somebody or, or, you know, doing damage to somebody, this is his way of uh, either consciously or subconsciously having himself removed from a situation that he can't bring himself to quit. You know, quitting, failure. Um, who knows? They know. I think it probably has a broader um, spectrum to it than just uh, you know some childhood trauma or period sexual gratification, which is uh, comes into where you guys are at. Why is your show so important? It's about freedom, you know. Uh, the Japanese society, I don't have a complete understanding of it, but they're pretty repressed, very strict. But their sexual proclivities get to be quite wild, and I think that that has a lot to do with restriction in society. You know, you put too many rules on people and they get to a point where you get tripped up and you can't handle it anymore, you start to act out. We all did it as children. And uh, anyway, I think you guys were headed in the right direction. Sure, maybe there's a sexual nature to it. Who knows what's in that poor guy's head. Maybe he just uh, is a guy who knows deep down inside he shouldn't be walking around with a gun on his hip, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's that side of it. And I think you guys were headed in the right direction. Too much repression causes deviant behavior. And people start to act out and break the rules, whether they do it consciously, subconsciously. You know, who can be sure? It certainly is pretty uh, broad in our society where people just don't seem to be able to follow the rules. You can't toe the line, so what do you do? 
you know. So, uh, anyways, good that's thoughts, right. Greg. I I don't have anything else to add to that. I really appreciate it. Thank Indeed. you for making that call tonight. With uh, Dime Store Psychology, you get what you pay for, and but uh, that sounds pretty good. Well, in this case, mm-hmm. anybody can call in with their interpretation, <laughs> right. and uh, so feel free. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So I did a quick uh, Google search. Oh yeah, we got to talk about the naked guy. We didn't finish telling his story because oh yeah, Mark, I wanted to find out. Oh, he's he dead. died. Yeah, the dude's dead. He di- he was born in nineteen seventy two. So that's around younger than I am. He's forty. 42. Would okay. be 42. Yeah, so he Which died. Which is the answer. <laughs> it is. He died at age 33 in 2006. According to Wikipedia, his name was Andrew Martinez. And so they talk a little bit about him being naked at the University of California in Berkeley. And then after him, you know, being naked for a little while there, they did pass some sort of rule on campus banning nudity on campus. Martinez wrote a 1992 guest column in the Oakland Tribune where he wrote, quote, When I walk around nude, I'm acting how I think it is reasonable to act, not how middle class values tell me I should act. I'm refusing to hide my dissent in normalcy, even though it is very easy to do so, unquote. Martinez, who typically only attend, or typically attended classes wearing only sandals and a backpack, came a cause célèbre at the university for a while, participating in a number of nude events on campus and performances by the Bay Area nude performance group The Explicit Players. He appeared on national talk shows, was profiled in a photo essay in Playgirl magazine, and was parodied in the 1994 college comedy PCU. As a response to Martinez's actions, UC Berkeley issued its policy statement concerning public nudity and sexually offensive conduct, banning public nudity in December of 1992. Then, neither employed nor furthering his education, Martinez continued living in Berkeley and was arrested for public nudity by the city. He fought those charges and won. It remained legal to walk around nude in Berkeley, and he went further, attending a city council meeting naked. The city adopted an... <laughs> just thinking. The- <laughs> <laughs> we might want to... Maybe that's the next drinking game. That's what know? I was just thinking of when, uh, you know, they, this guy's attending a city council meeting naked. I'm thinking, oh, boy, the haters in Keene sure would love that one. I mean, we've had people arrested in city council meetings, as you alleged, or as you insinuated there, uh, Rich, for the drinking game that we played. And it's actually been played multiple times. Uh, the first time there were arrests and the times after that they ignored us as they should have done the first time. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, taking it to public nudity would definitely upset some of the uh, the local haters. So going on here, he did win against those charges. The city adopted an anti-nudity ordinance in July of 1993. Martinez and some of his supporters again showed up at a city council meeting in the Buff, and he became the first person arrested under the new city ordinance. He pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge and got two years probation just for being naked. Wow. And unfortunately- and where was that? That was Berkeley. So they, they finally got him? Yeah, they outlawed nudity, oh, and then uh, he violated that, and they got him. Mm. He pled guilty and two years probation. And surprise, surprise, once he became in the clutches of the criminal so-called justice system is about the time when his life started to spiral downward. After his legal matters were settled, Martinez began wearing clothes again and began to write a manuscript about his experiences. He traveled to Europe, studied judo, and after his return and continued unemployment, he began to manifest symptoms of mental illness and spent much of the decade following his period of national attention moving among halfway houses, psychiatric institutions, Mm. occasional homelessness, and jail, but never getting comprehensive treatment, said his family. He showed signs of schizophrenia and was prescribed medication, but with little improvement. His mother said that it was an endless cycle of trying to get answers but never getting any. It was endless, endless, endless. On January 10th of 2006, Martinez was arrested after a fight at a halfway house and charged with two counts of uh, battery and one count of assault with a deadly weapon. Mm. He was placed in maximum security custody at Santa Clara County Jail in San Jose. The last time Martinez's mother saw her son was three weeks before his death when she visited him in jail. She said he was sad, he was tired. He said he had enough. She said, I alerted everyone, but nothing happened. On the evening of his death, a guard checked on him at 11 p.m. and he was fine. But a few minutes later, other inmates reported hearing sounds coming from his cell. An officer returned at 11.19 and found Martinez unconscious. The 33-year-old Martinez was found with a plastic bag cinched around his head. He was taken to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead of apparent suicide in May of 2006. Wow. A bag around the head. 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, seems like a tough one to pull I, off. I, I well, I would think it wouldn't be tough to pull off. I would think you would pull it off. Like you would have to be really dedicated to the idea of killing yourself to kill yourself with a plastic bag, right? Right. Because so how do you pull that one off? I mean, the, your your body's natural reaction is to try to stop it from dying. So you would still be going against that, and that's a fairly powerful natural uh, reaction. Well, you start- I mean, people manage seppuku. Well, well, that's true, but, but they're seppuku, cutting out their own entrails in that particular. Which, again, seems like it would require a lot of self-discipline. Sure, but, I mean, yeah, you'd have to have the discipline to be able to to disembowel yourself with seppuku. Yeah, but you're not but, trying to overcome a lizard brain with uh, like you are with asphyxiation. Um, right. I mean, you've got... <laughs> seppuku, your bowels are spilling out. I mean, it's only a matter of time. You can't undo what you have done at that point. You could try to push them back in, but it's going to be really tough. You probably tough. will try to push them back in. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, if you're trying to suffocate yourself with a plastic bag, there is going to be that period where you're losing consciousness or air and you're going to want to... The body is going to want to fight that and tear the bag off or whatever. So, wow. So quite a shocking end to the naked guy. We'll continue with your thoughts on why Flash. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and 
you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want right here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. You get to create the content, submit whatever you want right there to our Reddit-based front page, and then you can vote up if you like and vote down if you don't. It's all over there at freetalklive.com, so enjoy for free. I want you to get ready for the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. It's going to be March the 28th and 29th in downtown Austin, Texas. Of course, that's where the Texas Bitcoin Conference would be, in Texas. It's at the Moody Theater. It's going to be loaded with the best and the brightest speakers, the latest ex exhibitions on Bitcoin, as well as hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin hackathon. If you've got that next big Bitcoin idea, an idea that uses the blockchain technology, this is the place to be because the good ideas are going to get funded. They've even invited the entire Texas legislature to show them how, seeing uh, just to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference is going to prove that Bitcoin is a force for good. If you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just interested, this is the place to be, March the 28th and 29th, along with, the, of course, their kickoff event at, uh, on the 27th. Right now, they're even doing a white, uh, they're, they're making a call for white papers. So if you've got an idea to make this community grow, get in contact with them. Free Talk Live was there last year, and it was phenomenal. And we're going to be, of course, there this year doing interviews and having a great time. Head over to TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get tickets and details about all the ways you can be part of the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. You don't want to miss it. TexasBitcoinConference.com. So uh, we've got this topic that we've been discussing here throughout uh, most of the show now at this point about exposing oneself. There's a cop in New Jersey who is getting in trouble for having exposed himself, allegedly, to multiple victims. He thankfully did not force any kind of sexual act to occur beyond the exposure, so it's certainly not the most objectionable thing that a perverted cop has done, but it led to a conversation just in general about the motivation to expose, and uh, so I think to some extent there's been some agreement between callers and hosts thus far that it's the sexual repression that is experienced by a lot of Americans that leads, in some cases, to this kind of manifestation of sexual deviancy like this. Like, you know, if we didn't have laws against nudity and we had more of the naked guy, you know, somebody who just makes a habit of going around in public every now and then or often enough as a naked person, if it wasn't unusual for us to see those sorts of things, then... The perverts would, would have to do something else. Right. Would the flasher then have the same power? Uh, would, would, would that act be as satisfying to the flasher? I don't think it would. Uh, but you're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. And I was looking around to see what, uh, you know, what does Google think about this? And I had uh, put in, why do people flash? And the first article that came up was from 2012 out of New South Wales. The Sydney Morning Herald has a piece about this by Stephanie Gardner. A middle-aged man in red and black boxer shorts flashing young girls on Emerald Beach. In, uh, a man aged in his 60s exposing himself in a discount store in Sydney's West. A man in his early 30s wearing a fluoro work vest flashing two young girls as they walked past a park in Melbourne's inner west. A man flashing while riding a bike in North uh, Park Northwest of Melbourne. Last month, there were a spate of similar incidents of exposure, which forensic and clinical psychologist Georgia O'Donnell or Georgina, rather, says is the most common form of illegal sexual behavior. It is, she says, motivated by gratification from a stranger who does not consent. So what is behind this behavior, which has recently targeted both women and young children? Flashers, who can be men and women, but are most often men in their adolescence and early adulthood, 
may have a sexual disorder called exhibitionism or paraphilia, characterized by having repeated urges to expose themselves to a stranger. According to Dr. O'Donnell, quote, exhibitionism is defined by a pattern of sexual arousal, which may be expressed in exhibitionist behavior. Exhibitionist behavior, by definition, is non-contact, and there is usually no intention of further sexual behavior towards the stranger. There are many theories about what causes the urges, but generally people who flash do so because they find it arousing, said Dr. O'Donnell. Quote, some people have a conscious desire to upset or shock the stranger, while others may fantasize that the stranger will him or herself become sexually aroused by their display. Others are not aware of or concerned about the stranger's response at all. So I guess the answer is there's different motivations here. I guess. Women can also be diagnosed with exhibitionism, she said. Quote, female exhibitionist acts may include habitually undressing at a window that can be seen by the public for the purpose of experiencing sexual gratification from the attention of onlookers. Exhibitionist behavior is illegal, and in North South Wales, obscene exposure carries a penalty of up to six months in jail. There were a total of 284 sexual offenses in the category of indecent assault, acts of indecency, and other sexual offenses reported to police in inner city Sydney in 2011, according to some bureau. O'Donnell said, quote, exhibitionist acts may be perceived as a less serious nuisance act. However, for some victims, the behavior can be very distressing and fear evoking. Now. It's kind of like um, the whole burglary thing. You know, when you come home, you see your house has been burglarized. A lot of people will feel like they're not safe in the house anymore. You're as safe in the house as you were yesterday. Which it, means not that safe, right? Because right? well, you I got mean, burglarized. It, it just means <laughs> it means what it means, right? Like there's no place that can't from which things cannot be stolen. Um, sure. Know? I mean, there's there's no safe place. And well, they feel like their sanctum has been violated. violated. Right, and that's this essentially what goes on in this circumstance. Is as I've been wandering around without people showing me their parts uh, for, for quite some time and then this person violates that you know my expectations mm -hmm. you know my expectations have not been met by this person I was expecting pants and I didn't get them and uh, you know <laughs> that's what uh, that's what it is right it's it's just like anything could have happened here yeah I mean I guess it's it's hard for me to understand why this would be so uh, upsetting to people I mean it's just some guy in a trench coat he's just a perv I mean, it's not. It's the. It's one well, of the least offensive things that someone could do sexually to another person. Okay, but the guy in the trench coat wants a reaction generally. Yeah. If he doesn't get his reaction, what's he willing to do to get a reaction? I can tell you that I I slept in the same room in prison with a guy who had previously had exposure charges that then decided to attempt to rape some woman. Oh no! And it, this isn't just yeah, some but just because one wants... guy attempts rape after Understood, exposing Ian. himself doesn't mean all exposure folks are going to go. Just and because rape. some Post exposure hoc, folks prompter hawk. <laughs> yes. Just because some exposure <laughs> folks ch choose not to doesn't mean that some won't. Won't. And that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Mm. All right, so your thoughts are certainly welcome. The toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Mark, you've got a story about a Louisiana test that had been administered, when was this, in the 1700s, 1800s? When were they giving this thing out to people? This was in the 1800s. Um, to to uh, qualify you to vote, you would have to take some sort of a quiz. Right, this is from Daily Mail. Dot com dailymail.co.uk I think you can get there through the dot com though. Mm, uh, Harvard students take the 1964 Louisiana literacy test that black voters had to pass before being allowed to go to the polls, and every single person failed. Are we going to get some examples of the questions? Uh, I think that there were some in here actually. Yeah, I'd like to know what some of these questions were. We'll get into it here. Harvard University students could not pass this test. We'll uh, find out more about it here in moments. Your thoughts are welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And then coming up, a hacker reveals why he targeted the government. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. 
This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The easiest thing in the world for a reader to do is to stop reading, according to the late, great Barney Kilgore, who became managing editor of the Wall Street Journal in 1941 and grew the paper's circulation from 33,000 to 1 million by the 60s. And he'd be pleased to know that his paper is one of the few that people now pay to read online. Someone else pre-internet who realized that attention is fragile? Motown Records founder Barry Gordy. In the early 60s, when his label dominated the charts, he'd bring a dozen real people into the Hitsville, USA studios and audition songs. And he'd ask, if you were down to your last dollar, would you spend it on this record or would you buy a sandwich? Today, attention span seems like an oxymoron. For tips on cutting through the clutter, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. It's a test that Mark will be telling us about here that people had to take back in the 1800s to be able to vote in Louisiana that's been readministered now to Harvard students. Apparently not a single one of them passed it. And we'll get more details on that. Your calls and thoughts are also welcome. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And at Free Talk Live, we do enjoy antiwar.com. It's a great site, and they've got all kinds of useful information that you're just not going to find in the mainstream media about global conflict. Anti-war has the answers, the facts, and the readership, but they don't have a pot of gold. They need your assistance. They're going up against the war machine of the Federal Reserve and their printing press and the mainstream media, and they need your assistance. They're down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay and are committed to keeping the website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation at antiwar.com slash donate. That's antiwar.com slash donate. By the way, they proudly and gladly take Bitcoin. That's antiwar.com because war is the health 
of the states. So, Mark, uh, let's continue with this story. Ian and Rich Paul also in the studio here tonight. Uh, Mark, where is this coming from, by the way? Daily Mail. Daily Mail in the U.K., uh, revealing Harvard students having taken a quiz originally administered to black people in Louisiana. Now, Rich Paul, you thought maybe this was being administered to everybody with the intention of uh, blacks not being able to pass it because they were illiterate? Um, I, I seem to recall that that's what they did, is rather than saying black people can't vote, they said nobody who can't pass this test can vote, and then everybody had to take the take the test and the hope was on their part that blacks would have less education and be less likely to pass it that's that's my understanding of it right well i mean that's the idea but apparently this says it was given to black voters um so that doesn't mean it wasn't also given to other voters but i suppose that's true so um going on here it says a group of harvard students recently said the notorious 1964 louisiana literacy test just 50 years ago, states in the South issued similar tests to voters who couldn't provide proof of a fifth grade education. Wait, so, this was in the 60s of the, the 20th century. Right. I'm sorry. I thought you said this was the uh, the 1800s. I apologize. No, no. It was the 1960s. I, oh, my. I do okay. remember you saying that, but I, it passed by me, you know, just slid by my head. Okay. I didn't, didn't correct you. The test was uh, so you had to provide proof of proof of a fifth grade education. And if you could provide that, then you didn't have to take this test. The test was intended to disenfranchise African Americans who, in order to pass, had an, uh, had to correctly answer all 30 questions in 10 minutes. Despite their Ivy League pedigree, none of the students managed to pass the test or make sense of the vague questions. There are weird questions, too. Um, do you want to hear some of them? Please. So uh, I've got to scroll down here. I'm terribly sorry. Um, it just goes on here, starting at the top. State of Louisiana. Literacy test. This test may be given to anyone who cannot prove a fifth grade education. Directions. Do what you are told to do in each statement. Nothing more, nothing less. Be careful, as one wrong answer denotes failure of the test. You have ten minutes to complete the test. One wrong answer. You fail. Got it? Okay. So this isn't 70% or whatever, okay? (laughs) Draw wow. a line around the number or letter of this sentence. Okay. That's like drawing a circle, I, I would guess imagine, but you, uh, it's not really clear, is it? Uh, yeah, I guess you're dry, drawing a circle around the number one. Number one, draw a line around the circle, the, the number or guess. letter of this sentence. Is uh, there a correct answers list here so we know? I like... don't know. <laughs> <laughs> number two, draw a line under the last word of this line. So is a line a sentence? Why do they use sentence in the first question and then line in the second question? Well, right. And it could also mean to draw a line under the last word of this line uh, could mean, well, yeah, that is kind of confusing because it could have been referring to the line that you were drawing earlier, although not necessarily. I guess. So I'm going to take line as the answer there. Cross out the longest word in this line. and I'm going to say the longest word in that line is longest. Okay. I'm with you there. Cross out, draw a line around the shortest word in this line. So I'm going to uh, guess you're going to circle A. The, the, wor- the, the word A. Yeah, yep, the word the A. a. Circle the first. This first, is number five. You're number moving five. To number five. Circle the first, first letter of the alphabet in this line. Circle the first, comma, first letter of the alphabet Took me in a this second. line. Do you know what the first letter of the alphabet is? That would be the letter A. So, so what circling- is the first A? In that in line, alphabet. right? Yeah, it would well, be the I mean, word obviously, it's, Rich, you're at a disadvantage here. You're not looking at it, but I think mm-hmm. it is in alphabet. That's correct. Um, yeah, <laughs> he nailed it. Now, this is not. Uh, this seems to have nothing to do with a fifth grade education. At least, <laughs> this is some kind of uh, weird. At least, as my fifth grade education went, <laughs> uh, this is a bizarre follow the instructions kind of trip them up kind of quiz. I well, I'm I'm with you so far. I haven't read the other ten or six questions or however. I many think there it's thirty. Left. Really? Oh my God! We can't go through. No, I don't questions. intend to go through them all, but it's <laughs> it's just kind of interesting. Did you want to randomly Let, pick? No, one? let's keep going. I mean, I I have the first page here. It goes up through number twelve. So uh, let's go through number twelve. In see how we do the that. space below, draw three circles. One inside, engulfed by the other. So it says draw three circles with one engulfed by the other. Does that mean where's the what third about the circle? third circle? Where's it go? Does that mean that you draw three circles in that two of them are engulfed by the first? I, I don't know. Don't, I would probably no. draw two circles with one inside 
the uh, inside the other and then put a third circle to the side. That's what I would have done. I was trying to figure out if putting two one circle inside of another circle created a third circle, and that didn't do no. it. So I was, it's, it's all sort of weird. So you're saying draw one circle without a circle in it and then draw one circle with a circle in it? Yeah, that that's right? what I would have done. Yeah, okay. Ab above the letter X, make a small cross. Number okay. eight. That draw, seems easy enough. Draw a line through the letter below that comes earliest in the alphabet. And then they and then give you a series of letters. A series of, uh, of letters, and there is an A in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number nine. And remember, you have to draw. They're telling you to draw a line. They're trying to cro cross out. They're telling you to circle. All in the same test. Right. So mm. if you circle something and you don't draw a line under it, you, you're you out. Fail. Yeah. Simon says you're out. Um, draw a line through the two letters below that come last in the alphabet. And they do have a Z and they do have a Y in that list of letters. Okay. Number 10, in the first circle below, write the last letter of the first word beginning with L. Hold on. In the <laughs> write the last letter of the first word beginning with L, which would be the word last, the last letter in that word but being it doesn't the say, letter T. It doesn't say in this line. You know how it, on the others they'd yeah. say in this line? So is it... Is it the state of Louisiana from the very beginning yeah, of the is test? Is it Louisiana? <laughs> or, what is it? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Because Louisiana ends with an A and, uh, let's see, last ends with a T. So, yes, there could be, you know, sorry, it's up here at the top. Yeah, and we don't know what the right answer and, is. Well, and it's important to know that they're, you know, all the Harvard students they lost didn't get this it. one. And the idea was you're supposed to miss... Right? Like, you're not supposed to get this, right? There's 30 mm -hmm. questions. You miss one of the questions in this yeah, test. you're going to bomb You don't us. get to vote if you uh, don't have a fifth grade ex education in Louisiana in 1964. Now, I've often said on the air here that I think that people are unqualified to vote. The vast majority. I'm, I'm, I'll take the 80-20 rule. 80% of people are just unqualified to vote. And it's because they don't have enough information. They don't have the, the reasoning skills. They just shouldn't be voting. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when you hand over the ability to vote, uh, this, the, uh, administer the test to see whether somebody votes, to a government organization, they're going to do things like this. Right? Mm, like, yeah. you know, if you're going to have a voting quiz, you should be asking things about to find out whether the person's qualified to vote. You know, who's your congressman, for instance? Uh, how many states are in the union? When was the Constitution ratified? You know, some questions like that might be more to the point than what's the first letter in the, this, the, the, this sentence. That doesn't even, it's, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And I wonder, what, when did this thing get, when did they get rid of it? How long did this last? It's cited as the 1964 test. Did it last, you know, the whole year and then get challenged in court? What was the history behind this? I don't know. You don't know. All right. Toll-free number here. If you know, 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, a hacker talks about why he decided to target the government. It's Free Talk Live. It's Lumber Liquidator's third annual yellow and black Friday flooring sale. Right now, get incredible end-of-year deals before they're gone. There's no better time to get hardwoods, like Brazilian Koa for an unheard of 40% off. And all bamboo is up to 30% off. Plus, our thickest and best laminates are 25% off our lowest prices. And get 26-month special financing. Even more deals are added daily in our stores. It only happens once a year. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. When Karl Marx failed because the workers of the world did not unite, that was the end of communism? Not a chance. It went underground and attacked the culture. Movies, the school system, the family unit, and Christian values. Cultural Marxism, featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, G. Edward Griffin, and Ted Bear, explains what happened. Get the DVD at moviepubs.net, worldnetdaily.com, or newswithviews.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. 
HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95 now. 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The questions on the 30-question 30, uh, 30 test given out in Louisiana in 1964 to ostensibly prevent black people from voting, although the claim is that it was administered to anyone they suspected of not having a, or who could not prove that they had a fifth grade education so at the time. So certainly some whites were included in that. It got, uh, it, it definitely gets a little bit more obtuse as the quiz goes on, and you gave me a little bit of info, Mark, just a right. moment ago that I didn't catch when you were talking about it earlier. Right. This is really important is is that there's 30 questions. Right. You can't get any of them wrong, and you have to be done 10 minutes. 10 minutes for so a 30-question quiz. 20 seconds per question. I'm going to read question number 28 to you. Consider that you have, an, on average, 20 seconds to answer this question. Now, you get to, you'll, you of course, be able to reread it, but I'm just going to tell you this is difficult. That, and if you can't prove a fifth grade education, you ain't going to do it. Divide a vertical line in two equal parts by bisecting it with a curved horizontal line that is straight at the point of bisection of the vertical. That doesn't sound too complicated. What the hell is it? What is a straight <laughs> curved line, Ian? Well, it doesn't it doesn't say <laughs> <laughs> And how can it be horizontal? Well, apparently it's curved in most of the portion, but it's at the point then it it's divides curved. it. It's straight. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't, but that's the See, point. I think they're looking looking to get you to do. I mean, I remember being taught how to like bisect a line in a drawing using a uh, compass and a ruler. 
Mm -hmm. oh, where yeah. where you would you know you would draw two curves that each intersected at two points, and then you would connect those two points with a straight line, and you get one that's perpendicular to your original line. But it doesn't sound like that's quite what they're asking for. And how you make any part of something you've drawn with a compass straight, I have no idea because what, a compass is designed to draw one smooth curve. When I read this, what it says to me is, is our intention is to not let people who can't prove a fifth grade education vote. So if you can't prove a fifth grade education, we will administer you this test that you will surely fail mm -hmm. to give you the feeling like you are not completely disenfranchised. Now, this is one of those sort of those little backdoor things where they intend to disenfranchise people. Like in Florida, for instance, they have a uh, they had a rule for a period of time where and they still do have the rule that felons can't vote. It's just that you can get the right to vote back as long as you fit a certain classification of felon within some period of time after being out or whatever. Mm. So you can get your right back. But, you know, the fact is, is that during, I think it was 2000 and, 2000 and then 2004, I, being a felon, could not vote in Florida because... I, you know, there I am. I'm a felon. And they weren't letting felons vote. But ma the majority of people that didn't get to vote in that circumstance were black people because I, when I was in prison, you know, the numbers were like 10 to 1 mm. black to white or at least non-white to, to white. Some of these other questions are pretty confusing, and I can understand why somebody would be a little confused at this one. Number 27, write, write, okay, so you have to read this to understand. Yeah. W-R-I-T-E is the first write. The second write is R-I-G-H-T. So write, as in write down the word write, from the left to the right as you see it spelled here. Write, write, from the left to the right as you see it spelled here. I think that means to write R-I-G-H-T. That's what I would think. It, but it's just, it's written in a very strange uh, manner that's designed to confuse, I think. Uh, here's another one. Write number 29. Write every other word in this first line and print every third word in same line, which isn't even a complete sentence. Original type smaller and first line ended at comma, but capitalize the fifth word that you write. Jeez. 20 yeah. seconds. One question wrong, you fail. Uh, write every other word in this first line and print every third word in the same line. It, now, writing and printing, is there a difference between the two yeah, things? Yeah, okay, at uh, that writing time. Writing would be cursive in yeah. those days. Really? Yeah, so, uh, right, at that time, that was handwriting. Oh, and interesting. So you would have to understand that. That's a, the, that's See, a, I wouldn't have gotten that. Well, <laughs> you would have because you would have known that at the time. That was mm. what writing was called. Yeah. But, I, I wonder how much of the issue with this thing relates to the fact that 50 years ago they taught Greek and Latin in high school and now they teach remedial English in college. I don't know if, if that change makes any difference. I'd love to see the contemporary statistics to find out how many people actually passed and failed this vote in the context in which it was given. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people passed this thing in 1964 in Louisiana when they wanted to vote? I'd really like to know. So any other uh, d details to share from this story? Just the, kind of the news about this is that kids in Harvard can't take this today, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the news is, is that this is what it looks like when you have the government decide, um, you know, I think it would have just been fairer to say if you, if you can't prove your fifth grade education— don't vote, you can't vote mm. because this test makes it is pretty obvious that the intention is that you fail it. This isn't a fifth grade equivalency test. This is a we intend you to fail test. So you can share with us your thoughts on this or whatever happens to be on your mind. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I will link to the actual test. I found a, I found a PDF yep. of the full 30 questions. We'll put that on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access those through news.freetalklive.com. Do you think that uh, there should be some qualification for voting? Because this question is still... Bubbling around. It's 19, this well, the is qualification for, today is you have to be 18 and a so-called American citizen. Do you have to be a citizen? You have to, yeah, I guess, yeah, you'd have to be a citizen, right, mm -hmm. to, to vote. And you do have to be 18. But so many people don't. And also, what, you have to be... You so have many to people prove, don't what? 
uh, don't vote. You okay. have to prove residency wherever it is that you're, uh, you know, intending to vote. Mm-hmm. Some places it's more rigorous than others. Not in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, you can vote as an inhabitant, not a resident. Okay, but you have to. You have to. They've they've attempted to put laws in place that make it so that you have to prove that you live in a given geographic area to vote. And it seems to me that that makes a perfect makes a certain amount of sense. Now in Florida, you had to have done that two months in advance or whatever it is before you could vote. Uh, so. You know, if you go and register, if you you can't register day of and then vote, you have mm. to have registered ahead of time. In Florida, in Florida, in New Hampshire, you can register day of. And right. Vote. Well, I'm, I'm, we're doing a show all right. over America, and what I'm trying to point out is, is there's different rules everywhere for what it takes to to vote. So let's not pretend that we don't have rules on what it takes to vote. This was simply a rule that said you have to have a fifth grade education, well, didn't which it? to some extent seems reasonable, I suppose. But this test makes it look highly unreasonable. Didn't it mm, used to be okay. that you had to be 21 and a landowner? Not in 1964. Ago? No, but I mean a long time yeah. ago. Yes. Yeah. At one time, you did have to be a landowner. And but white. something that people neglect to mention, they think that only meant the rich. At that time, there was still homesteadable land all over. So anybody who could just grab a piece of land and build a shack on it, it's not like you know you had to own an estate. To be uh, to be able to vote, but the thing that I'm curious uh, about is, let us say that somebody wasn't smart enough to figure out how to get a state ID. How many people would be down with letting that person vote? Well, Ian is down with letting that person vote. He, um, Ian doesn't. doesn't I don't ever show ID to vote. Should be no qualification to vote. And mm. I'm kind of of the opinion that if you're going to vote in a government election, you probably should have a government ID to prove that you uh, are, you know, qualified and who you say you are. Now, I know a lot of people in America, like The Daily Show, loves to uh, to, to lampoon voting rules because they say nobody ever gets arrested for these things. There's so few charges and that's true but here in new hampshire we can prove over and over that there's voter fraud that but the, the, the uh, state's attorney just won't do anything about it because the sentence isn't very strict and it's just not worth it there's other crimes to go after so they're like eh, whatever and i don't know if it's enough to throw an election I don't know mathematically if it makes a difference, but I can tell you that if one side gets to vote twice and another side votes once, that the side that gets to vote twice is going to win every time. Like, that's how hmm. that's or nearly every time, and that's how Provided that's going to go. they have at least 33% of the electorate. Indeed, um, or, and there's only two people running. But that's going to, you know, it's going to give you a distinct advantage. So being up, getting twice as many votes. I don't know. I don't know what the, the rules should be, but it seems to me that uh, there's, that you should have to prove where you live and that you can only vote once. What about homeless people? I'm only saying what the, I am residing under this. Uh, last night I slept under this bridge. Okay, so that's sufficient to you to swear that you live somewhere. I really only care if you vote one time. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to, if you care enough to vote in a particular election, then you'll probably vote in the one near nearest to where you yep. live mm-hmm. so that you just vote once. Okay, so... But I don't know how to do that. Yeah, you really can't. I mean, per- without permanent some... purple ink like they did in Iraq? I thought that was kind of neat. All right, we'll come back with more Social here in moments. Security number. Share your thoughts. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,187, silver around $16.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $388.72. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat brought to you by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, on Monday, Missouri Governor Jane Nixon issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency and making way for the Missouri National Guard to come into the Ferguson area in anticipation of civil unrest following the grand jury announcement in the Michael Brown case expected this month. Governor Nixon said the possibility of expanded unrest necessitated the extra measures. The executive order establishes a law enforcement command of the St. Louis County Police, the St. Louis Police, and the Missouri Highway Patrol. The National Guard is expected to provide security at important locations around the city. The New York Times has reported that at least 40 different agencies of the federal government have used undercover officers posing as business people, welfare recipients, political protesters, doctors, and ministers. The Times did a review of internal records and interviewed officials for the report. They found that the Supreme Court used undercover officers pretending to be student protesters to look for suspicious activity. The IRS went undercover as accountants, drug dealers, and yacht buyers. The Agriculture Department used more than 100 agents pretending to be food stamp recipients. The use of undercover agents was once largely the domain of the FBI, but since 9-11, nearly every federal agency now employs them. Protests have continued in Mexico as the country pushes for answers regarding the disappearance of 43 students and prepares for a nationwide strike on Thursday. Solidarity protests are also being planned in Mexico City, New York City, Los Angeles, and Houston. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Negotiating teams representing the six powers, the United States, Russia, China, Britain, France, and Germany, open talks with Iran today in Vienna. The BBC reports the talks will focus on Iran's nuclear program. A senior United States administration official said in a press briefing that a permanent agreement could still be reached with Iran before the end of the talks scheduled for November 24th. Texas Representative Lyle Larson has introduced the Texas Liberty Preservation Act, which would ban indefinite detention as authorized by the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act. House Bill 165 would declare three provisions in the 2012 NDAA as unconstitutional. This includes prosecution by military tribunals under the law of war, indefinite detention, and transfer of persons apprehended within the United States 
to foreign jurisdictions. Officials who violate the law would face up to a year in prison and $10,000 in fines. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That phone number again, 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat can help you. The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Last month, the FDA approved Halusex, a new class of weight loss drug that helps users avoid overeating by producing nightmarish hallucinations whenever food is around. Halusex targets the brain's cerebral cortex, stimulating the centers responsible for fear and visual processing. Test subjects reported an unprecedented decrease in appetite and showed dramatic weight loss, with only 18% reporting night terrors or subsequent cardiac arrest. It's designed to make fatty and sugary foods even scarier. An apple just looks like it has fangs, but a milkshake will threaten you and your family by name. Earlier incarnations of the drug proved to be too powerful and produced mental states in which test subjects no longer believed that food had ever existed. An unshakable belief that the subject had to eat all of the food on the planet in order to prevent food from rising up and destroying the human race. Oh, you don't understand how to do this. Or the conviction that food could be negotiated with diplomatically. With the lab report, I'm Aisha Patel. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll free here and bring up anything you want. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We invite you to our website where you can enjoy all kinds of features. They're all totally free. Freetalklive.com. Unlike many talk show hosts who would like to charge you for their sites, we give it away. So enjoy. Freetalklive.com. Hacker revealing from his jail cell why he targeted the government, according to RT.com. By the way, joining you in our studio tonight, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. Jailed hacker Jeremy Hammond says hacking government websites is all he ever wanted to do. He's worried about the invasive power that states have with computer technology and justifies his actions by the need to expose the truth and confront justice. He's currently serving a 10-year jail sentence at Manchester Federal Prison in rural Kentucky, one of the longest that a U.S. hacker has ever received. After breaking into the Stratfor Intelligence Company's website, November 15th will mark his first anniversary behind bars, and Hammond believes it's laughable that he could be seen as a threat to national security because of his actions. He says, I mean, I didn't kill anybody, he said in an interview with the AP. The 29-year-old was initially faced with the possibility of spending the rest of his life behind bars, and he realizes the power that countries and others can wield with computers. He says, if I was capable of doing these things on my own, what about a well-financed team that trained for years? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you don't think that uh, other nations are doing that right now? Yeah, right. So during his crusade for social justice, Hammond got a distinct buzz from trying to get the better of some of the most high-profile websites in the country. He was like a kid in a candy shop. He says, I was like, damn, man, this is crazy. From the start, I always wanted to target government websites, but also police and corporations that profit off of government contracts, he told the AP. I hacked a lot of dot .govs. Hammond, who hails from Chicago, has been a hacktivist for over a decade. And during this time, he had been in and out of prison for sticking to his beliefs and his, quote, sense of duty to take action. He said in a video released on the day he was incarcerated in November of 2013, quote, I hacked into dozens of high-profile corporations and government institutions, understanding very clearly that what I was doing was against the law and that my actions could land me back in federal prison. But I felt that I had an obligation to use my skills to expose and confront injustice and to bring the truth to light. 
AP caught up Which with him. Which truths and injustices did he find is what I want to know. I mean... I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I am with you that... So I guess this is... It's really a difficult question. If you're going to have a state, you're likely... You're going to have to keep secrets, right? No, I don't know. Why? Why would you want to? Why would you want to do that? Well, because certain organizations need secrets. I mean, any organiz... Basically, any company has some kind of secrets that it doesn't want to get out. But the state is, if it's supposed to be there to protect you and the state's job is to respect your rights, uh, then transparency would be a way for them to do that, right? I understand well, the difficulty. And not, not just that, but if you accept the premise of of democracy that that people, you know, should be making these rights, making these decisions democratically... The, the idea of secrets is kind of anathema to that, because if you don't know what your government is doing, How can you, you can't vote against it. I and concur with that completely. I'm not gonna, I'm not disputing that. So let's say for a second— So then you would agree that we don't need state secrets. No, I'm not ag- agreeing to that. I'm asking—I'm I'm delving into this question, because that's my job as a talk show host, right, Ian? Well, I thought you just agreed with what Rich Paul no, said. No, I agree with what Re- Rich Paul says. I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking All about right. a Gordian knot here, that there's a paradox to this situation. If you're going to have a state, that a state generally has to have secrets. Let me give you, for instance, the, the state of Israel. Now, you have lots of – there's lots of problems with the state of Israel, no doubt about it. But the Iron Dome really, as far as I know, isn't one of them. Do you know what this is, Ian? Nope. The Iron Dome is a missile protection uh, project that they've got. So it is able to – it sends out missiles to blow up missiles that are coming in. And these are very rudimentary missiles that are often coming in, basically uh, concrete blocks, uh, concrete blocks with fireworks attached to them. Um, and so it's kosher Star Wars. <laughs> it's something like that. So it goes in. It'll blow up this stuff. It's it's very advanced technology. Okay. And the intention is is to protect the citizens. Do Would you leak, if you were in charge, Ian, of the Iron Dome, which as far as I can tell is only a defensive mechanism, would you leak all the information about the, the Iron Dome whatever, out like- to the internet so that people who are, I don't know, trying to lob missiles in at your fellow human beings might be able to figure out whatever the problem with your missile defense system is? Yeah, that's a good question. Would you release the administrator password to, the, to this back end of the system? That's mm-hmm. uh, right. Like th- that's even a password, right? Yeah. So if you have, you know, your email account, your government email account, should anybody be able to go in there? Not just uh, and and you know look at what you've written. I suppose they shouldn't be able to change the things you've written, but just a, a read only look at your emails. I, well, I would say yes. I okay, think absolutely. Fine. If there's a government email, then the public should have access to that information. Okay. But I think you make a, a persuasive point when you bring up, you know, the question of uh, this missile defense system. Should just anybody be able to get in there and and you know parse through the code of that? Should they be able to have uh, root access to the back system? Uh, Rich Paul, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, root access uh, on the a Unix box is is God access. So if you had root access, you'd be able to fire those things. Well, well you it's want, defensive only. Yeah, yeah, you, well, even so, you wouldn't well, want— Well, still, you fire off all, all of somebody's defensive missiles. They don't have any left. A yeah. transparent <laughs> wall isn't a wall that can't be passed through. It's just mm-hmm. a wall that can be seen through. So I would say that, uh, you know, the, the public should only be able to see the code or whatever that might be, not necessarily mess with it. But knowing what the code is might give you the ability to then go hack into it or whatever one does. I've kind of been toying with this idea about uh, the United States— States government in ways that it could make itself viable, for instance, because the world's going to change in the future. We know that things are going to change. Mm-hmm. If states mm-hmm. want to be viable, they are going to need to evolve. Um, if the United States government did what sort of the conservative uh, Mark wanted 10 years ago, which is to simply be an organization that provides military protection and not done all the other things that it does, and like welfare, social welfare programs, telling states how they have to do things, you know that kind of thing. If it kept its nose out of that, then I would think you would have a lot more states opting in. So, for instance, if you're, you know, you're uh, the the geopolitical designation known as Chihuahua. Right. And you're like, hey, this whole being a Mexican thing isn't that great. Why don't we just join up with the uh, United States and, you know, just get their military protection or whatever? And that if it was just a military protection program, I think you'd have a lot of people sort of opting in. I mean, what is NATO? 
It's an organization of na nations that say, hey, we're going to protect each other. And the UN, to some extent, is this is a similar organization. So if it was just that, then you'd have this sort of one world defense organization relatively quickly that would, uh, you know, the, the bad guys wouldn't be able to stand against, it would seem to me. Well, if you're talking about changing government into an opt-in organization, then it would be sensible for to allow them to have secrets, right? Because then you could opt out, and their structure wouldn't have an effect on you, presumably. Uh, they wouldn't be able to tax you and force you to pay for it. So if you're talking about something where you're consenting then the secrets make more sense in that particular in, in case. In that case, you would be talking about an individual consenting, and I would wonder whether an individual like, would want to opt in, for instance. So I would personally— well, If it's about getting protected or whatever, then you would, you would, you know, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. Maybe there would be another organization out there that could protect you for less. But on a global scale, they're probably—you probably— it. it you know that this larger organization would probably just sort of dominate as opposed to uh, there being a bunch of different little ones. Does that make sense? So if a county, if Cheshire County in which I reside, decided uh, got to decide whether or not it wanted to be in the United States Protection Organization, then likely I would be outvoted by my fellow citizens who are like I like red, white, and blue and eagles. You know, <laughs> you're saying you would vote against that, but others would vote for it. Right. So then I would not be opting in voluntarily. I would be forced because Yeah, I was I only in... talking about opting having the ability to opt in. If you're forced into something, then I think the more transparency there is, the better there is. I, it's it's interesting, right? So, you know, do you to think that every organization that works for the government is should be required to show all their emails and all their information? Yeah, why not? Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What do you think about transparency? You're welcome to share your thoughts here. The number 855-450-FREE. We'll get more from the hacker who is currently serving a 10-year uh, prison sentence. We'll see what else he has to say coming up on Free Talk Live. You take control. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Talk Live. People, they like to complain about the idea that the money is taxpayer dollars. It's not really true, is it? I mean, they were your dollars until you yeah. gave them to the government. Right. Now they're their dollars, <laughs> and they're going to do whatever the hell they damn well want to do with them. You're right. It is still your money in that if a thief comes and steals money from you... It doesn't cease to be yours just because yeah. they stole it. You still have a claim on that, but you don't have the ability to control the thief unless you actually have him in your custody. Mm. So that thief is going to go out and buy a big screen TV or do whatever, you know, spend it on coke and whores or whatever it is that thieves do. 
uh, with the money that they steal. And you That's what the politicians really, do with it. Yeah, you you know you can call the thief on the phone and say, "I told you not to spend that money on whores," <laughs> and he's gonna say, "Well, thanks for the input." <laughs> yeah, noted. I, I appreciate that. Free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got an interview with a hacker from his prison cell. Why did he target government agencies? He is explaining himself, saying he's always wanted to do so. But what sort of information did he help reveal? The article will give us a little bit more from RT.com. We'll continue that here in a moment, just after we tell you how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee that you can get out there. Yeah, you go to coffee.freetalklive.com. There we have BuzzBox Coffee, and you can get a free pound of it. It's 100% organic, top 1% great Arabica beans. It's shade-grown. This makes it, uh, you know, because coffee is a very absorbent product, it makes the organic designation that much more uh, important to many people Be, when you consider that it, coffee is often grown in countries where leaded gas is an outlawed or, you know, maybe the rules on pesticides aren't as rigorous as they are in the United States. BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but what they do that other coffees don't do is they give us money back that we're able to give out as microloans through Kiva.org. Um, I'm excited about being teamed up with Kiva and helping people around the world get a hand up out of poverty. I believe these microloans are really the answer uh, for, for helping people out of, uh, out of their desperate situations. Human freedom is really awesome, but not being able to eat kind of stinks. So, uh, you know, join me uh, as a customer at coffee.freetalklive.com. I actually did sign up. I uh, wanted to get some for my father-in-law. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We'll tell you more about the hacker, Jeremy Hammond, uh, why he ended up in prison for a decade. He's only been through one out of the 10 years at this point, and that is where the AP caught up with him and RT doing a kind of a summary of the story here. We'll get into that. Uh, with, But first, to your phone calls and thoughts with Ian, Rich, and Mark behind the microphones. We've got Tim on the line in Great Falls, Montana. Hello, Tim. Hello there. Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, this guy earlier was talking about uh, telling people, God telling people to kill people. Yes, that was at the very beginning of our show tonight. Uh, that was Pugnacious Pete oh. calling from California. Oh, well, that was on the radio when I was pulling into the parking lot at my hotel. Gotcha. But anyways, I know damn well there's a verse in the Bible that says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. Apparently, some people want to share. Huh? Some people want to share, apparently. Well, it's, it's crazy talk. Yep, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I don't think God's told anybody to kill anybody since the days of Moses and Joshua. Maybe possibly King David. I'm not sure. But uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And the people that start talking about vengeance... When you start seeking vengeance, your life pretty much just goes to hell. 
Tim, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Kind of reminds me of Nietzsche. Be careful when you set out to slay monsters that you do not become a monster yourself. Indeed. When you look too deeply into the abyss, the abyss looks also into you. So let's continue here with Jeremy Hammond from his prison cell in, uh, where is he in? I think it's Indiana or something like that. Anyway, uh, Kentucky, sorry about that. Manchester Federal Prison in rural Kentucky is where the AP caught up with him for an interview about a year into his 10-year sentence for hacking government websites, among other places. It's uh, a federal sentence? Sorry. Yes. So he's going to do eight and a half on that. This is the nicest room in the place, he says, speaking from a drab cinder block visiting room about how and why he did what he did. Prison authorities banned cameras and recorders from the room, citing security. However, behind the most ordinary demeanor is an individual with a prodigious talent. He's been able to hack into some of the most important websites in the United States. He said in his video, uh, quote, could I have achieved the same goals through legal means? This was a video released on the day of his incarceration, by the way. Uh, should, could I have achieved the same goals through legal means? I have tried everything from voting petitions to peaceful protest and have found that those in power do not want the truth to be exposed. No, I'd agree with that. Hammond became one of the FBI's most wanted cyber criminals. He enjoyed the challenge of trying to hack into websites. Sometimes it would take him months, and on other occasions he would give up. However, the 29-year-old recalls hacking into the Stratford website, the incident which eventually landed him behind bars. Hammond was amazed at just how easy it was to gain access to the system, while he was astonished that the company's credit card data had not been encrypted. This proved to be a major embarrassment for the intelligence firm, with the CEO acknowledging, quote, We did not encrypt credit card files. This was our failure. But a little bit more on the Stratfor thing before we go on with Jeremy's story here. According to a different story about the Stratfor case, when Anonymous successfully infiltrated the networks of Stratfor in 2011 as part of Operation Antisec, uh, the group uncovered a trove of personal emails between the company's executives in which a number of shadowy operations were revealed, including evidence of Strat for being contracted by corporations and government entities alike to surveil political protesters and activists, including members of PETA as well as Occupy Wall Street. So that's just one example of some of the information that you know would not have been able to be known had the hackers not done their magic. More here from the RT story. Hammond, again, was amazed at how easy it was to get in. Expanding his own bank balance had never interested the Ch Chicago native. After hacking into Stratford, he used some of the credit card numbers to make donations to charities, such as the Red Cross. The company lost over $1 million due to the 29-year-old's actions. Hammond stated in his video, quote, I targeted information security firms because they work in secret to protect government and corporate interests at the expense of individual rights, undermining and discrediting activists, journalists, and other truth seekers, and spreading disinformation. He was eventually arrested after being outed to the authorities by a fellow hacker who was working as an informant for the FBI. Hector Xavier Monseguer, who went by the name of Sabu, advised Hammond to hack the Stratford website before he turned him into the authorities. I'm vaguely recalling this story that that username Sabu. Uh, that I remember we talked about this a long time ago. Yeah, I think I think he was anonymous. He must he was a defector from uh, from anonymous. As yes, I and as it turns out, so he's uh, from anti sex. So yeah. Yep, and uh, and as it turns out, apparently Anonymous was utilized by the FBI. We'll give you that info here in a moment. Uh, but unlike Hammond, Sabu strangely escaped punishment for his role as a serial hacker. He had faced the prospect of 124 years in jail for his misdemeanors, but in the end, miraculously, did not face any time behind bars due to helping the authorities in return for leniency in regards to his own criminal matters. It's since come to light that Monsegur, a single father from New York, directed others towards vulnerable targets and orchestrating cyber attacks against the websites of foreign governments, all under the constant watch of the FBI. In fact, the latest releases now lend credence to Hammond's claims that the FBI guided Anonymous into conducting cyber attacks at their behest, regardless of the sheer illegality involved. The documents, a previously unpublished statement purported to be authored by Hammond and never before seen court files, now corroborate the role of the feds in these proxy cyber wars of sorts. So they, the federal government, 
was using Anonymous because, well, they're anonymous, so who's asking who to do what? They were using the Anonymous hack group to engage in hacking foreign governments. And that's one of the things wow. this guy's revealed. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control here. More coming up on Free Talk Live. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the tort attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.fm. Talk live, dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. 
Hacker Jeremy Hammond being interviewed from inside his prison cell. He's got nine more years to go on his sentence. Mark, you said it's an 85% rule at uh, the federal level, yep. so he got a 10-year sentence, so maybe he'll be out in another seven and a half years if he is uh, of good behavior. He's convicted of various different hacking so-called crimes, but as he points out, he never hurt anybody. All his goal was was to reveal the truth, he says. He wanted to reveal information about different corporate contractors like security uh, contractor Stratfor uh, that was hacked to reveal you know, a variety of information, including the fact that apparently uh, they had been working with the uh, you know, different governments in order to, uh, you know, to essentially surveil political protesters and activists, including Occupy Wall Street and PETA, among others. He took some credit card information from Stratfor and charged uh, donations, actually, to the credit cards to the Red Cross. He wasn't trying to get rich. He did not benefit financially from his hacks, even though he certainly could have uh, with that stolen credit card information. He could have done this for any charity, and he chose the Red Cross? I don't know if it was just the Red Cross. I know it was an example of one of the charities. It All said right. charities such as uh, the Red Cross. So then it talks about Sabu, who was also known as Hector Xavier Monsigur. This was someone who worked with Jeremy Hammond and was actually turned out he was working with the feds. He had turned you know, evidence over to the feds in order to save his own skin from the federal prison. And apparently that worked for Sabu. The latest releases now lend credence to Hammond's claims that the FBI even guided Anonymous into conducting cyber attacks at their behest, even though that's highly illegal. Uh, the Chicago native remembers the circumstances of his arrest. On March 5, 2012, he was smoking pot with his friends when police kicked in the front door and someone threw a flashbang. He said there were all these dudes with assault rifles. Everyone else hit the floor, but Hammond dashed to his bedroom to slam shut his encrypted Mac laptop. The idea, the idea being that if you close the laptop and then they reopen it, they have to type in whatever the password is to it's lucky didn't get shot. De-encrypt the laptop. Yeah, obviously he was mm. pretty serious about that. In fact, that's the story about them taking Ross Ulbricht was they snuck up on him essentially while he was in the library. Yeah, and they got him before he could allegedly close his laptop and allegedly caught him logged into the Silk Road. That's the story, at least. What actually happened, we don't know. But this is what Hammond is saying happened to him. He's up for parole in 2020 and spends his time in prison working in the laundry department where he uses his spare time to learn Spanish and play chess. Since his teenage years, Hammond has been critical of increased government surveillance and has hailed the actions of Chelsea Manning for helping to expose U.S. atrocities in Afghanistan and Iraq. He said, quote, uh, she took an enormous personal risk to leak this information, believing that the public had a right to know and hoping that her disclosures would be a positive step to end these abuses. It's heart-wrenching to hear about her cruel treatment in military lockup, he added in this video that he released in November of 2013. He also cited the influence of Anonymous, saying he was drawn to the group because he believes in autonomous, decentralized, direct action. Quote, I had a lot to contribute, including technical skills and how better uh, and how to better articulate ideas and goals. It was an exciting time, the birth of a digital dissent movement where the definitions and capabilities of hacktivism were being shaped. Unquote. Hammond had a lot of success in hacking into the websites of numerous organizations preying on their weak security. However, it was a rare elementary mistake that eventually led the Chicago native down or that let, let the Chicago native down as a weak password reportedly allowed the authorities to crack his encryption codes. So he did successfully close his laptop before the police were able to get to it. However, they were able to crack his password. His mm. password, he says, was really weak. It was his cat's name, Chewy, and the numbers one, two, three. Mm. Wow. Yeah, man. A lot of these guys getting taken down for uh, some pretty... What would see be seen as simple mistakes, you know, well, easy convenience. It's really convenience. hard day in and day out to open up a computer and, and type, type in a 16-digit or 25-digit right. password. Randomized, uh, you know, thing. Uh, my name right. is Ishmael. Capital Q, lowercase uh, right. S, one, seven, you know, whatever it well, is. Well, I've read that it's better to, that it's would to be To not harder. have a random code like that? Yeah, to, to basically put in a quote. Mm -hmm. um, a you know relatively short quote than it is to have sort of a t 
you know, 15. A mix of uppercase, lowercase. Right. So you, basically eight or 10 characters is all anybody's going to remember for a password, right? right? Um, but it, you can remember a line to a poem much more easily. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. There you go. So you've got something. and uh, th- or, or just a random selection out of a book that you like hmm. or whatever it might be. Uh, that that's just much more difficult for one of these black box things that's to, interesting. To, to to kick out. It is more characters. So the every- what do you think, Rich Paul? You're the IT guy in the room. Um. Well, about passwords, uh, a longer password can be better. And you know, I have a lot of sympathy for this guy because it's like, you know, you can go up against the government and you can win ten thousand times, mm-hmm. but. If the next time you make a mistake, then they've got you, and they've got sure. you for a long time. I mean, I can't count how many transactions I did without getting busted. Selling pot. But, yeah, selling pot, but getting hundreds, busted. Hundreds, hundreds, I'm sure. Um, I would neither confirm nor deny okay. that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's amazing. You, you only have to screw up once. Yeah, and sure. And they've got people watching you. Well, and it wasn't necessarily that you screwed up. I mean, you were set up by somebody who yeah. had been a client, and you had no reason to believe anything else but that this was a continued client that you were selling to. Yeah, well, the screw up was the first time the guy called me. Uh, he, he, the first asked, time, the first time you'd ever met him or the first time n- no, he this, called you to make an undercover deal? the first deal. time he called me after I hadn't heard from him for a year. Okay. He called me and I had a bad feeling and oh. I ended up telling him I couldn't do it. Uh, I said, nah, nah, it turns out I can't get it. Mm-hmm. And then like a week later, he called back later and, and I was out time. of money. Mm. And so I bit that time because I needed the money and I yep. couldn't just go home and say, sorry, Wendy, nothing to eat. We, I was afraid. But mm. yeah, you only have to screw up one. But nothing else clued you in. It was only just a bad feeling that you had had about it. Like, oh, this is weird. He hasn't called in a year. That kind of thing. Well, in in retrospect, uh, the the biggest thing that changed that I think was part of the thing that gave me a weird feeling is this time he had called and he wanted to pick up 24 hours later. And this was a guy who normally just wanted to call and pick up right now. Right and then. if you didn't have it right then, he would call somebody else. Mm-hmm. So, so he changed all of his a MO. sudden he wants to make an appointment. And I think that's part of what made me nervous. Mm. Unfortunately, you ended up getting uh, arrested after he made, what, four controlled buys or something like that from you? Uh, yeah, he made four buys of a quarter pound each, so right. a total of a pound. That way they can charge you with four separate charges of selling cannabis. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you can share your thoughts. Uh, you did, by the way, for listeners that don't know your story, you did refuse to take the plea deal in that particular case. You faced down what was a possible 100 years in prison mm-hmm. for well, selling that I pot. Think, and most importantly here, I was just discussing this with a, with, a, with my wife, is that Rich was given the opportunity to get out of all of these charges if he would simply have worn a wire into the Keen Activist Center. That's true. Right? Like, I don't know if they promised. Did they promise you that you'd get out of all the charges, or was it more of a vague promise that that would help? you uh basically they said they would not charge me and they'd let me keep selling weed (laughs) (laughs) well i mean that was one of the things that i said is you know if i I get that in writing (laughs) well if i i said if i suddenly stop smoking weed people are going to be aware that something's wrong and they're they're, they were saying oh no we want you keep doing right just what you're doing (laughs) (laughs) can i get can i get that in writing and then carry it around with me so in case any cops pull me over i can just say hey i've got got this note here from the FBI that says I can sell this. I got the license to ill. I wish I'd had the offer in writing so I could have shown it to the jury. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. There's more coming up here. Uh, You can share your thoughts on hacking or selling pot or whatever it is you want to talk about. We'll talk about anything here on Free Talk Live at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Coming up, there's been a state of emergency set up in Missouri in anticipation of, well, some difficulties coming up. We'll tell you more. Free Talk Live. Cabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. 
make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Attention men, are you urinating often, waking at night to urinate? We want to send you a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate, made with a natural ingredient that supports healthy urine flow, bladder emptying, and is shown to reduce waking at night from the urge to urinate. You can try Super Beta Prostate free. Only pay shipping and handling. This free giveaway is available while supplies last. For details, just call 800-659-5412. That's 800-659-5412. Call 800-659-5412. Do you have relatives and friends that are convinced there is no need ever to prepare for any kind of emergency? Are these also folks you buy Christmas presents for? At 30dayfoodsupply.com, we can solve both of these problems at the same time. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. We can ship your Christmas presents directly to them. Choose from our original $99 30-day food supply, our long-term storage vegan burger mixes, and other oatmeals soups, porridges, beans, and granolas for everyday use. All products are non-GMO, MSG-free, and vegetarian. Most are gluten, soy, and nut-free. Call 541-229-0010 today. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low, cutting out the middleman by buying directly from their producers in Oregon. Remember, only $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit the website 30dayfoodsupply.com. Call 541-229-0010. 30dayfoodsupply.com. 541-229-0010. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free. Even in these remaining moments, we have enough time for you. You just dial in at 855-450-FREE or join us on Skype, our Skype username is lrn.fm so you can of course take control of the airwaves here you can also help us out if you support the show by shopping at shop.freetalklive.com you enter amazon through the links you'll find there and free talk live gets a cut of the sale but there are some things you can't get at amazon like a car (laughs) you cannot get a car at amazon and you certainly can't get it with bitcoin new Mm -hmm. age auto sales has late model used cars that have been cared for from their rental fleet and since it's from the rental fleet they are taken care of right well you know they took care of them there but also you don't have to pay for the auction fees and you don't have to pay Mm -hmm. for the the cost to get them to the auction sometimes these things can come from states away Somebody's paying for that, and those costs are included, obviously. 
they can ship the, your car anywhere in the world. So go to New Age Auto Sales. Dot com. See what they've got there. They're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you see something you like and you want to get paid for dollars, I'm sure they can help you out. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website and give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, NewAgeAutoSales.com. According to KMOX, CBSLocal.com, Missouri Governor Jay Nixon signed an executive order activating the Missouri National Guard on Monday afternoon. Now, this is supposedly a state of emergency. According to a news release, the role of the National Guard is to, quote, support law enforcement during any period of unrest that might occur following the grand jury's decision concerning the investigation into the death of Michael Brown. Now, what we haven't really been following very closely in the last few weeks is apparently there's still news coming out of Ferguson, Missouri. Yeah, there have been uh, uh, still protests. Yep, still things going on with the police, uh, you know, going after people who are videoing the, the police and, and that kind of thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, the KKK is apparently now involved. And guess which side they've taken? The uh, police's side? Yes, they have. And it's just all very and anonymous is in, involved. They're now hacking the KKK folks. Oh, really? So, you know, <laughs> it's a real mess down in there in Ferguson. And I guess the idea is that the grand jury would have to return a true bill against this cop, right? Is that the intention? That's the idea. Uh, but it's predicted that they will not be doing that, and so the idea is being that, well, if the grand jury doesn't return the true bill against the cop, then that there might be some sort of violence in the streets by protesters. That's yeah. the speculation. And it's it's really a difficult situation in this circumstance. So, so the, 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 the system System set up to decide, uh, you know, whether or not somebody should be, uh, you know, guilty or be tried for a felony, right, or a capital felony, or some level, the grand jury makes a decision. I think it's just all felonies. I think so. And so, if there's not enough uh, information to get a grand jury, just a, to a majority of them to vote for it, then, you know, it does. They don't get. He doesn't get charged with a felony. Now, I don't know what the information is there, but I've seen a lot of different things coming out of Ferguson. I don't know what happened in this particular circumstance. Do I believe that there's some systemic racism? I think the numbers are obvious. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's also sort of problems in the quote-unquote greater black community, too, with crime. So I don't know what the answer is in this particular circumstance. And if this cop didn't do anything, obviously he shouldn't go down for everything terrible that's happened to black people in the last, I don't know, pick the amount of decades you want to pick. It's not his fault. So, But, I mean, that's what's going to be – that's what the circumstance here is. That's what it's going to look like. As part of our ongoing efforts to plan and be prepared for any contingency, it's necessary to have these resources in place in advance of any announcement of the grand jury's decision, said Missouri Governor Jay Nixon. His order also established that the Missouri Highway Patrol, the St. Louis County Police Department, and St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department will operate as a unified command to keep members of the public safe to protect property while allowing citizens to exercise their constitutional rights. Well, that sounds like a nice idea, but I can tell you that uh, in the recent events here in Keene, New Hampshire, which made international headlines, the supposed pumpkin fest riots that occurred here, uh, I don't know if there was a state of emergency declared in that particular case, nor would it really have mattered. The police definitely were not protecting constitutional rights in that incident. They were uh, utilizing more force than was absolutely necessary. And things like the de declaration, uh, declaration of a state of emergency, as I understand it, things like that. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong about this. But a state of emergency essentially gives the government the ability. It's, it's them giving themselves the ability to ignore the usual rules. Whatever the rules might normally be, uh, they, they just put it all aside under the idea that, well, it's a state of emergency. And so you know, none of that stuff applies now. We can do whatever we want. So I don't, you know, by, by them signing a state of emergency doesn't give me cause to believe that they're going to all of a sudden be more respectful of pe uh, people's constitutional rights. I would think the opposite. Yeah. I see bad things coming. Yeah. Nixon's order, uh, let's see, the St. Louis County Police Department will have command and operational control over security in the city of Ferguson in areas of protest and acts of civil disobedience should such activities occur. Uh, from what I understand, there are people who are traveling to 
uh, the Ferguson I'll area there are. for the purpose of doing who knows what once this particular decision well, or lack thereof comes down. Whenever like the G20 goes somewhere, you've got these black flag anarchist folks that uh, mm-hmm. that follow them around and toss Molotov cocktails uh, at cars and whip rocks through uh, store windows and that kind of thing in order to, I don't know, capitalism. Um, and it it's all very, it, I think there's some people that are just attracted to the chaos. Oh, absolutely. And then, you know, you've got other stories like this one out of photographyisnotacrime.com, where New Jersey campus police struggled to arrest a 27-year-old college student for more than seven minutes, pepper spraying him in the process. In a video going viral, they never once provided probable cause, despite being asked several times. Right. Now, if the campus police are going to treat a man who's literally just standing on a bridge on a trail like it's a wooded kind of trail there's a bridge going over a creek or something like that and he's just hanging out uh they the video begins with the police trying to arrest the man on the bridge while another man stands nearby openly recording um uh, the, the man's name is um jeffrey michael Michael remains stiff, his hands grasping the rail as three cops try to handcuff him. He repeatedly asks the reason for his arrest, but they remain vague, accusing him of obstructing, uh, obstructing of identification. That means he wouldn't give him uh, their his ID. That's right, and resisting arrest. Eventually, more cops arrive, and one cop ends up pepper spraying him. They eventually handcuff him, but they never state the reason for his arrest. Police remain vague even That's after. That's because this isn't about the law. It's about compliance That's at that right. point. You, mm. I have asked you for your ID, whether it is legal, you know, legally required for you to give it or not. Um, you, you, know, in, you know what? Legal really doesn't even matter at that point either. I thought I had a right to remain silent. But it turns out I've got the rights of a POW, name, mm-hmm. rank, and serial number. I've been captured by the East German pol- Stasi or something. Well, also, wasn't there a court decision that said that you have to invoke your right to remain silent? There is now an, a, a, a Supreme Court ruling, and this is just insane. It's uh, you know they're, they're putting the, the K in America pretty quick <laughs> um, when they say that you now have to invoke your right to remain silent. I am remaining silent because I have a right to remain silent because if not, mm. your silence be- can be considered an indication of guilt. Of guilt. In yeah. what crazy mixed that up Supreme universe? Court, right? That was uh, it was it was yeah, I believe it was the US Supreme Court. Yeah. I'd have to look again just to make sure, but I believe it's the US Supreme Court. Wow. Yeah, it's a shocker. And when you assert your right to remain silent, I can tell you this from my experience from my arrest in Massachusetts. I had to to assert my right to remain silent three different times, and the cops kept coming back and trying to question me. Sure. Even after the third time, they showed up with a backpack in in their hand and said, is this your backpack? And I said, if you put that backpack in my property, I will get it back to its owner, but I'm not answering any questions. (laughs) I think you, um, in that circumstance, uh, you're you're supposed to, if you ask for your attorney, I'm not going to answer any questions until I get a chance to speak to my attorney. Mm -hmm. At that point... Essentially, everything that's said after that is non-admissible. Mm. But I wouldn't play any games with these people. No. I, mm-hmm. um, you know, because it only matters if you take it all the way to court, and if they can, they will likely keep you in jail for two years while you wait to go to court. There's no winning in playing with the police. So I would just, if they ask questions. Do I have a right to remain silent? And then they'll have to answer that uh, question. And then if they keep asking you questions, you keep asking that same question over and over. Do I have the right to remain silent? So we're going to keep our eyes on what happens in Ferguson, Missouri, because if the police are going to pepper spray a man because he was not, you know, refusing to show identification, you can better believe they're gearing up for some major head smashing uh, in Ferguson. And we will, uh, as, as that develops, the, the decision is expected sometime this week, from what I understand. So uh, we'll let you know more. If you are in Ferguson and you want to let us know more about what's going on on the ground, we'd love to take your calls later this week as well. But we're out of time for tonight. We'll see you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Get more of Rich Paul over at nhjury.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,187, silver around $16.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $388.72. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat, brought to you by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, on Monday, Missouri Governor Jane Nixon issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency and making way for the Missouri National Guard to come into the Ferguson area in anticipation of civil unrest following the grand jury announcement in the Michael Brown case expected this month. Governor Nixon said the possibility of expanded unrest necessitated the extra measures. The executive order establishes a law enforcement command of the St. Louis County Police, the St. Louis Police, and the Missouri Highway Patrol. The National Guard is expected to provide security at important locations around the city. The New York Times has reported that at least 40 different agencies of the federal government have used undercover officers posing as business people, welfare recipients, political protesters, doctors, and ministers. The Times did a review of internal records and interviewed officials for the report. They found that the Supreme Court used undercover officers pretending to be student protesters to look for suspicious activity. The IRS went undercover as accountants, drug dealers, and yacht buyers. The Agriculture Department used more than 100 agents pretending to be food stamp recipients. The use of undercover agents was once largely the domain of the FBI, but since 9-11, nearly every federal agency now employs them. Protests have continued in Mexico as the country pushes for answers regarding the disappearance of 43 students and prepares for a nationwide strike on Thursday. Solidarity protests are also being planned in Mexico City, New York City, Los Angeles, and Houston. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Negotiating teams representing the six powers, the United States, Russia, China, Britain, France, and Germany, 
Open talks with Iran today in Vienna. The BBC reports the talks will focus on Iran's nuclear program. A senior United States administration official said in a press briefing that a permanent agreement could still be reached with Iran before the end of the talks scheduled for November 24th. Texas Representative Lyle Larson has introduced the Texas Liberty Preservation Act, which would ban indefinite detention as authorized by the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act. House Bill 165 would declare three provisions in the 2012 NDAA as unconstitutional. This includes prosecution by military tribunals under the law of war, indefinite detention, and transfer of persons apprehended within the United States to foreign jurisdictions. Officials who violate the law would face up to a year in prison and $10,000 in fines. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That phone number again, 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat can help you. The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In a deal policymakers have hailed as a decisive step towards combating the rapidly escalating national debt, the United States settled 1,200 millionth of a percent of its debt to China this week with a single autographed photograph of John Hamm. The sale of the glossy signed headshot of the acclaimed actor, which China reportedly accepted for a financial easement of approximately $150 out of America's estimated $1.3 trillion in obligations, concludes a six-month negotiation between the two parties. The decision was obviously not an easy one. But without question, this was the right choice for our nation's future. And in this week's science news, a distant planet is terrified that it might be able to someday support human life. In other news, a live cow is lowered onto the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. The majority of an office's supplies are used to apply for different jobs, and a lapsed cult member only attends sanctum on major bloodletting holidays. This is the Onion News Network.